Hi everyone, welcome back. All right, so today we're gonna be covering Foodie Beauty. She is, uh, she's told a lot of stories over the years of her time on YouTube. And luckily I've captured a lot of those and I put them together into a timeline video basically of um, situations where she's uh, shared stories about her um, romantic encounters. Now a lot of the time she was uh, in a long-term relationship in her later years. Um, she was with uh, Pete's and BB for like eight years each. So it was a while, but she has a lot of stories of before she started dating Pete's and uh, kind of in between Pete's and BB. Um, but this is going to be basically the stories before Pete's and BB. Um, and then we have a couple stories that are uh, her online dating before meeting Natter. So that'd be after BB when she was living with Pete's again, just as friends, and she was starting to use the dating apps. Uh, she also did a lot of uh, online dating um, back before she started dating Pete's. So she has some stories of uh, how she met people online. And then we also have some uh, stories of her living situations. And she talks about some of the apartments she lived in before and the weird neighbors that she's had. So this series is TMI, where she shares too much information. Uh, and we're going to start it off by her telling the story of um, her five, top five worst lovers. So she made a video um, describing these top five experiences. And I kind of had to... Um, fill in the blanks as to who she was talking about and which stories uh, she was telling because some of them are similar, some of them aren't. Like, I, I could be wrong on who she's actually talking about. Um, or if it's a story that she's trying to tell. But uh, either way, it makes for a funny storyline. So then after the five, the top five, she kind of tells a couple more stories about people that she's been with. And then we get into her online encounters, which all happened before she was in her um, two long-term relationships and a couple after. All right, so I'm going to start the show. I'm doing a TMI. If you're new here and you're wondering what TMI is, it is a too much information story time where I basically sell my dignity online. <laughs> you know, I've had so many stories about different lovers. My lovers, my lovers. A lot of them are bad. <laughs> Top five bad lover moments. Now I'm warning you, this is very TMI because some of the things that have happened are nasty. Okay, number one. The dude who was too tired for sex, but then proceeded to get himself off to Zelda fanfiction porn soon after. I get it, I get it. I'm a big girl, so, you know, might have been tiring for him. But, come on! That's why you're on my list, buddy. Uh, I've absorb too much fiction. Number two, same guy. This one's kind of gross. The most TMI, I'd say. The dude who passed gas when my head was in that area. If you catch my drift. Get in, get the job done, get out. But I would So, I'm not, I don't think she's talking about Pete's. I think she's talking about someone else. But, I just thought that was just too funny not to put in there. <laughs> get the job. <laughs> get in, get the job done, and get out, he says. 
tell you a story time, a TMI. It's where I tell a story time or talk about things that nobody else in their right mind would talk about. And they are pretty gross, okay? This is disgusting. I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. This is a gross story about a guy I was hooking up with. This is the type of guy that I would get together with and not tell my friends about it. A secret you go to the grave with because they would make fun of you if they knew. You know what I mean? <laughs> that kind of guy. What about so she's told us before about her um, <laughs> her friend Big G that would uh, give her weed to go hang out in his room for a, lot, a little while and talk, she'd say. So her friends would say she's taking one for the team to go in there, talk to him, get some free weed. And um, then she says that she admits here that she's um, she actually uh, had a pity hookup with Big G. Um, and first admits it here on the, in this video and says that it's someone that she'd never want her friends to know about. So I don't know if she's actually talking about Big G at that point in, in the upcoming story here, but it just seemed like it might be Big G and that maybe she was hooking up with him multiple times rather than just the one time that she admits to. about to tell you none of my friends know i've never told anybody so you're the first to know you thousands of people have no idea who you are <laughs> and if my friends watch this which i'm sure someday they will they're gonna find out but you know what i don't care i mean whatever a lot of my friends have been with a lot worse so the next night i went over to big g's by myself i wanted to apologize we had a good talk and i was like you know what i do really like you i think you know where this is going i had pity with big g okay i'm just gonna fucking say it i did it i had pity with him <laughs> i mean i didn't think he was that bad he was a good kisser he wasn't a selfish lover he wasn't afraid of my weight that's the thing about being with a guy who doesn't mind your weight because some guys will be like oh i wish you were skinny so you can go on top and not kill me or so i don't have to do so much work ladies if a man is worth it he will work for you okay he comes over one night we had some drinks it's a turn off when a man doesn't know his drinking <laughs> that sounds like life advice from foodie <laughs> if he's worth it he'll work for it and can't handle his booze, you know? It's weird for me because it's like, for some reason, I either like a guy who doesn't drink at all, like BB or Pete's, or the complete opposite end of the spectrum, a guy who can down a bottle of whiskey, like JD, and not flinch, you know? In between men who can't handle their booze or become belligerent or just have a problem, I can't. This guy was like that. It's a shame because he was good at other things. We had too many drinks, and this is when I really found out that he couldn't handle it, you know? So we're drinking. We start getting into it. Third base. I'm exploring the south end of the map and I got music going it distracts from all that you ever do it with no music it's like too many weird noises I think it was my David Bowie CD and he farts it's funny because during most of her stories she does talk about the the music going on in the background while I'm south of the border. He farts in my face. Well, that went south quickly. <laughs> For me, the music cut. Like, that's all I could hear was that fart. And I was just like, it was the most disgusting. I was like, are you? I told you it was gross. <laughs> I can't think of anything more horrifying. Like, it was just, whoo. I felt so embarrassed for him, but I didn't want him to be super embarrassed. So I'm like, just keep going. It was horrible. Luckily, he was like, okay. She told him to keep going. <laughs> Well, he puts a stop to that soon. He's like, I really have to go to the bathroom. He runs to the bathroom, spends like an hour in there, and ends up clogging my toilet, which is, I guess, my karma. <laughs> it was horrible. I don't know if he just couldn't hold it or what, but it was not fun. I can tell you that right now. It was not fun. Oh, no, 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 no. I am full. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. It doesn't get any better. Well, actually, there's nothing worse than that. <laughs> For those of you who have not unsubscribed and are still here after the number two, here's number three. The dude who poked and prodded at my body like he was an alien inserting a probe as we watched a movie about cannibalism on his sofa. Yes, in Oh my God. I totally forgot about- well, Look who it is, Mr. Cannibal himself.
about this guy. I wish I didn't remember him. So this is another horrible hookup story. I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to hook up with this guy. It just kind of happened. <laughs> I used to work at a telemarketing place. Worst job ever. And I think I was maybe 19. I worked there for half of a summer. I just really wanted a job. And they were hiring. I basically had to sell encyclopedias and pantyhose. Mostly elderly women would buy them. Would you like that in beige or taupe? I didn't even know what color taupe was until I worked there. There was this guy working there and I didn't have a car at the time. I worked the later shift so I think my mom used to drive me to work and then I would take the bus home but I hated taking the bus because in my town at the time it was a dial a bus so basically you had to call the bus station and arrange for a pickup this guy had his own truck I think he had the hots for me because he used to offer to drive me home I wasn't really attracted to this guy he kind of looked like a surfer dude he had a long ponytail a hat it's hard to describe him he just wasn't my type I wasn't physically attracted to him can't explain it just wasn't so one day when he was driving me home he invited me to his house he was like do you want to come over and watch a movie he was really persistent about it finally I was like all right just a movie as friends so I went to his house. We kind of had so Oh, and I have to tell you. I knew what movie we were going to be watching because this guy was obsessed with the movie Ravenous. You remember that movie from the 90s about the cannibals? Anyways, it kind of sucks. You should check it out. So I'm like, oh, great. So he was obsessed with it. And he's like, you ever see the movie Ravenous? Like all the time at work on smoke breaks or whatever. Oh, it reminds me of the time from the movie Ravenous or Ravenous this, Ravenous that. And I was like, no, I've never seen it. Maybe we can watch that. And his eyes just lit up. He's like, yeah, let's watch Ravenous. It's like a total bachelor pad. I actually kind of look like Jeff. That's the weird things that she'd do for attention from men. This is one of them. I'm not sure why she went along with this, considering she said she wasn't attracted to the guy, but... Well, she gets herself in this situation. For Donner's apartment! <laughs> He had like a lava lamp, whatever. He put that on for mood. So he puts on Ravenous. He's like, get comfortable. He's like, get on the couch. So I get on the couch and lean kind of, you know? I think he's gonna sit beside me on the couch. No, he gets on the couch, gets behind me, like in a kind of laying position. And I was like, oh no. Immediately I'm like, I regret my decision to going over. So I'm like, okay, just get through this. Maybe he's a nice guy. Maybe he's a good kisser. So I kind of decided in my mind that if he was gonna kiss me, I might make out. It's been a while since I had any. So he gets behind me. Almost immediately, he starts like kissing on my neck and stuff. Reaches around. He was really rough. Like, dude. They're sensitive. He's just grabbing, like, massage. Like, are you trying to shape them into something else? Like, he was trying to tenderize my meat to get ready to eat me because he was ravenous. I'm just kidding. But I didn't want to be mean. When I was younger, I put up with a lot of shit. Right now, I have a way lower tolerance for shit, and I would have never put up with that. It's funny, because when she tells these stories, she'll say that a lot. But then this is all, it's and it's all pre-natter. So we see how much shit she'll actually put up with. <laughs> She'll put up with a lot. He's like, let's move to my bedroom. And I'm like, uh, actually, he's like, no, no, let's go, just go to my bedroom. So we go to his bedroom, which smells like Bachelor. I don't know what it is. I have bad luck with Bachelors and the smell of their bedrooms. I don't know. I'm like dirty pillow. So we're in his bedroom on his bed. He yanks off my pants, like one swoop, like, whoo. Underwear come off. He's like, sit up for a second. Start pulling off my shirt. Like, whoa. He was like really energetic and immediately just starts going to town, like all over my body. And it was painful. Like he was too fast and too hard. His fingers were like poking everywhere. It felt like, like George's girlfriend says from Seinfeld feels like aliens are probing my body. To make matters worse, when he would kiss me, oh my god, I swear my entire face was full of drool. I don't think he was gonna give up until he thought I was satisfied. So I was like, you know what? I just faked it. Fake it till you make it out of there alive. <laughs> I sat up and I was like, I gotta go. Like, you know, do you mind bringing me home? They brought me home. He was very nice. Oh my God. Why did I go there? I should have been more firm. I mean, I've encountered a lot of men who don't, unless you say like a dog, like bad dog. No. Yes. They don't get it, but not everyone's like that. That was so good. But devoured it as if I was ravenous. <laughs> that, I'm never gonna watch that movie. It reminds me too much of this lunatic. Things were kind of awkward after I decided not to take rides from him anymore. I have a feeling he doesn't make out with chicks often. So I just thought I would share that with you. I'm sure you found it very exciting. Number four, my vampire lover. <laughs> The dude who self-identified as a vampire and admired my arteries in the midst of making out. What okay, so she has a, a couple vampire friends that she talks about. So there's definitely more than one vampire guy. But uh, we're going to go with this story. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's the, the vain guy. 
I tell you about a lover? I guess this wouldn't really be a lover. It'd be like a hookup. Somebody weird I met on the internet. He's a blood drinker. Disclaimer, I'm not hating on the goth community. I used to be part of it. I still listen to goth music every day, but this guy just gave me bad vibes. I have a video where I explain this other weird hookup. You know, if you're born in the 80s or 90s or whatever, you would remember IRC. It was a popular chat room way back in the day. I think this was around 2004. And I moved away to live with my aunt to go to university, very briefly. And in that brief period of time, she was away in Jamaica. So I was meeting people on because I was lonely. I was starting my goth phase around. Yeah, so she has a few stories that come, uh, that are around this time when she's living with her aunt um, and, or at her aunt's house. And a lot of it is just the online dating stories. And then starting getting into darker things. I joined a chat club called something like Dark Shadow Lust 666. I don't know, something weird and cliche. <laughs> Back then, I had a big thing for dudes that were goth, especially guy liner. Dudes who were eyeliner start talking to this guy. He sounds very intelligent. And I like dudes with brains. After a few chats, I made him over. Downloaded a bunch of goth music like Crook Shadow, Susie and the Banshee, Bajas, you know, typo negative. So finally he gets to my house. It was a long bus ride for him. I'm very nervous. I open the door. I'm gonna try to describe him for you. There's a difference between describing and hating. I'm just saying what he looks like. He was actually pretty good looking. He had a cute face, very effeminate, very girly. I have a thing for guys with girly faces. Pretty face, you know? He was wearing guyliner. Now the first thing when our eyes met, what he did, he smiled this big grin. To my horror, he had these cheap ass plastic dollar store Halloween friggin' prop type of vampire teeth. Could you imagine <laughs> if that showed up to your door? Yeah, come on right in. Let's see how the night goes. They looked horrible. He also had jet black, greasy where the light in the hall of the building was reflecting big time on his hair. And he's wearing a feather boa, which, hey, I don't mind that. I let him in and I've... Chantelle said in her uh, in a couple other stories where she also wore a feather boa. Had a crush on a dude who had really nice fangs. They were professionally done, really nice. It just looked like long canines, you know? These were like Dracula on a budget type of fangs he had. Anyway, I let him in. I wasn't gonna be rude. And he told me his name was Damien, but I know it probably not. I've met a lot of golf Damien's. We're sitting on the couch together and I'm really trying to come up with ways. Hey, Sam. Sim Sim. Shim, shim. So anyway, I'm trying to think, how can I get out of this? So I remember pretending in the end that my aunt was coming home early from Jamaica and uh, she'd be home that night and I had to go with my mom to pick her up at the airport or some shit and I had to get ready so I couldn't hang out too long. So we're just sitting awkwardly on the couch, side by side, golf music playing, grabs my face out of nowhere until I taste these lips. This is not Shakespearean days. It's not the 18th, 17th century. You don't need to speak with shall and thou. I was just really not into him and I didn't want to kiss him, but I did. I let him kiss me because I was too afraid to be rude. Nowadays, oh no. But back then, put up with a lot of crap. I let him kiss me. He just gave me a, a little peck. It wasn't, I, I thought it would be worse. That was fine. And then he's like, you all right? You seem distant. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Being totally fake. Liar. <laughs> and then he goes like this. He goes like this on my neck and he's like, you have nice arteries. Arteries? You can't see my arteries. How are arteries nice? The fleshy tubes that carry blood through your body. Oh, of course, he's a vampire. So finally he tells me that he's a sanguinarian or something. I can't remember the name, sangua something, which means blood. He's a blood drinker. This guy really thinks he's a vampire. Who am I to tell him he's not? But, hmm. So she went looking for these people online and this is the kind of person she found. Right up her alley. Blood drinkers, cannibals. All that type of fun stuff. Not feeding on these arteries, buddy. <laughs> when he kept saying like, I'm looking for my next victim. <laughs> I think he was trying to be mysterious or something, even out of nowhere. Throwing this evil little weird laugh, like... <laughs> it was like a mix between I want to cut your head off and I want to jump your bones. He just talked really weird and pretentious, like... <laughs> shall I kiss these lips? <laughs> you shan't. You shall get back on the bus. Back to your yonder. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wonder what kind of play he was uh, trying to audition for here. It sounds like it was all like a big act for Chantel.
she wasn't having it. <laughs> I think a mixture he sensed that I was kind of distant and could tell when someone's into you, no matter who you are. Well, some people are a little more thick, but he wasn't stupid. Just wasn't my thing. And number five, last and least, <laughs> the one nighter with a missing finger who wore my bra during sex and cried for his mother because he was too drunk. Today's story time is TMI. When I first moved away to go to university, I had a guy friend who's been trying to hook up with me forever. And he was living in the city I was moving to go to university to, Ottawa. He was excited. He's like, we better hang out blah 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 and I really liked him as a friend I didn't have any feelings beyond that it just never happened he was from my hometown I met him in a bar yeah we worked together at like a crappy summer job together too that's the story on that but he was excited I was moving up. I was single so and we had a fun time hanging out and there was some sexual chemistry there honestly I think what it was was the fact that he always made fun of his own manhood he was very self-deprecating when it came to like his junk you know hit on me and try to get with me but then he would be like I don't know if you'd like it anyway I'm very small I guess he just felt like he could be really open with me and I'm gonna say right now for me size doesn't matter I can work with anything honestly you know it doesn't matter to me like it doesn't so I move up get settled in go to his place to hang out and he's a bachelor so he lives in a small one bedroom by himself breaks out a bottle of vodka we both take shots had way too many shots my inhibitions were lowered <laughs> so you know he started to really like you and I guess I just kind of was like okay you know at that point I was feeling good I was feeling into it basically so far the green light was on so everything was going well until we got to his bed room that's when the green light went from yellow to red very fast i don't know what it is but i have had such bad experiences with bachelor rooms and the smell dudes if you're single you're a bachelor invest in a bottle of febreze you know nobody is gonna get turned on going into your room when it smells like bedhead and funyuns <laughs> like it's not gonna happen used to it at this point so i was like oh whatever it was the <laughs> we know it's chantel's favorite smell she's lying yellow light at that point i don't know he was just really like he hadn't had any in like forever or something because he was hurriedly taking his pants off he had tie-dye boxers number one yellow lights turning to amber <laughs> same thing i guess and he's like lays down on the bed splayed out like this and all i see is no joke fine whatever like i said doesn't matter i get on the bed and i look at his face and this is i can't do arousal faces his was like he looked like a bullfrog high on ether. I'm not joking. Even that, I could ignore. It's when things started getting weird. He like, make fun of it. Tell me how small it is, make fun of it. And I'm thinking, no, I'm not gonna make fun of it to your face. I'm gonna call my best friend later and make fun of it, but not now. <laughs> Come on guys, don't pretend. If a dude sends you a pic, like you haven't sent it to your friend to laugh at it. Same by the notification bell. A notification went off. It was probably an email coupon or something. And I treated it like an emergency. It's like, I gotta get out of here. So I bolted and he's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Just left him out there. Your bachelor. Invest in a bottle of Febreze. My edgy lover. Trying to rock my brain. So I'm not quite sure who, who the person is that uh, she describes as... What did she say? Wearing a bra? Like no fi missing finger and crying. <laughs> the one nighter with a missing finger who wore my bra during sex and cried for his mother because he was too drunk. Today yeah, no, I, I, uh, yeah. I never found that story. But we're moving on to some other uh, weird lover stories here. trying to rack my brain thinking of these friggin boyfriends or whatever and some of these dudes I just bury way down I don't want to remember them this is one of those guys last I heard from this guy he's in prison for murder I don't know if it's true you know how rumors go around who knows with this guy I met this guy at Big G's we used to party at Big G's all the time one summer I was like 16 or 17 16 I think and we would just party at his house all summer I was living in a group home and he had his own place you know so there's this guy one of my best friends cut so I should have added this into the uh, teen years storyline um, art story times that I made, but I forgot to put it in there. So it ended up in this one instead because it's also just a weird story. <laughs> He came down from somewhere. I think he just came out of prison as well. I don't know if 
he was on something, I don't really know. He was the older cousin and he was kind of like the bad guy. He was really nice. He was just really on edge, you know, like he'd pace around and be like, man, I'm just out to lunch, man. And he was just like high strung, you know? Rest his soul. He ended up getting in a car accident and getting cut in half, actually. That was the rumor. I don't know if that's true either. Anyways, so this guy came with back then when I was living in the group home. I liked all kinds of music, Tupac, whatever. But I was really big into the band Tool. I was slowly starting to get into a golf phase. He came in, tall, dark, and mysterious. He had a long, black trench coat, black hair, black sunglasses. When he came in, it wasn't even sunny out. It was nighttime. I don't know what it was, but everything about him screamed edgy. So he comes in, sits down, doesn't say hi to anybody, doesn't say anything to anybody. I guess it just looked cooler for him to just not say anything. This guy didn't talk to me the whole night. Just sat there with his sunglasses at the kitchen table. Didn't talk to anybody, really. I remember my friend giving me looks like, that guy's so weird. When my friends think a guy is weird, I know I'm gonna have a crush on him. <laughs> they think that about, like, all my boyfriends. Except for BB. They really like BB. So this guy, he grew on me. The more he didn't talk to me, the more he ignored me, the more I couldn't see his eyes because his sunglasses were on, even in the pitch dark, the more my heart sang. And I wanted to hang out with him more. And luckily, he became part of our summer group with my friend's cousin. He was French. He had a French name. Um, I don't want to give his real name, but I'll call him Samuel. I don't know. So eventually that summer, my friend and her boyfriend got their own place. It was a real dump, but it was just basically to party. One night, Samuel ended up needing a place to stay. He was one of those couch surfer guys. Apparently his parents disowned him. I think he was in some trouble with the law or whatever. They let him stay there, but he was getting on their nerves, apparently. And he was just really lazy, never did anything. Ate all their food, blah, blah, blah. Common complaints. Still, I was like, oh, you know, I want this guy to notice me. And I wasn't very big back then. I was on the chubby side, but I was pretty much just chubby. But I had a feeling he didn't like chubby women. I starved myself for a few weeks and that flattened me out a bit. So unhealthy. Don't ever do that. The weight comes back on plus some. I kid you not, this guy never took his sunglasses off. Not once. I always had them on when he was around other people. I remember going to work that day, going back to the group home. There was a night where we were going to a big party. This popular girl in high school was having a really big party. My friends and I were going. So the plan was I was finishing work. I worked at New York fries at the time, full of fry grease. I was going to go home to the group home, get ready. The weekends you were allowed to stay out. You had to sign out for a weekend. During the week, we had a curfew of 10. And she so this is all good information that I should have really had in the last video we did with her teen stories. But if you haven't watched that one, I suggest watching it because there's a lot of funny stories kind of like this one. She talks more about that time in her life. I lived up the street from the group home, so that was good. I remember wearing form-fitting. I wish I had pictures of these days. I actually don't have any. Went back to the group home. I wore that skirt, a pencil skirt, like it came up high and I was showing a bit of my waist and I wore this black, oh, I miss this sweater. I really miss this sweater. It had a shag carpet kind of material and it was kind of glittery and it was so gorgeous. I wore that, sprayed a lot of my Tommy Girl perfume. Do you guys remember Tommy Girl? Oh man. I bet you if I got a whiff of that today, that would bring me back. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna get this guy tonight. Tonight he's mine. I go over, sure enough he's there with his sunglasses and I was kind of like disappointed because he didn't seem excited. He wasn't like all dressed up and ready. He kind of smelled. He kind of smelled like bedhead, that bachelor bedhead, like I don't give a crap about anything anymore kind of smell. And I was like, oh, you know, and he even had like rusties here. It just wasn't, he didn't bother to look nice for us or for me and I did all this work. He's sitting in the corner, he starts playing with like, there was like a random guitar. There's always a random guitar at parties. Somebody's always got to strum a few chords. He was doing that with his sunglasses on and his bed head. I was like, can you play some Pink Floyd? He just ignored me. He didn't even acknowledge that I even spoke. I'm like, maybe he's, I don't know, maybe he's deaf. I don't know. We're all getting ready to walk to this party. He wasn't paying attention to me. I looked good. I smelled good. Came time to go. I really wanted to stay behind with him and just like, I don't know, spend time with him alone. Let's see if he would open up. We start walking. It's like in the middle of winter. It was freezing. We get halfway there and I was like, wait. <laughs> so everyone stops and I'm like, I want to go back. And my friend was like, what? And I had told her that I, I kind of like it. She kind of like teased me about it. And she's like, oh, he's such a loser. Why do you like him? I ended up walking all the way back alone. And she was mad at me. She was mad that I ditched her. I was like, I don't really want to go to this party. And it's true. I mean, she was accepted by the popular people. I wasn't friends with this girl that we were going to the party. I go all the way back and he's still doing whatever in the apartment. And I don't remember what I said or whatever. I think I like admitted I wanted to hang out with him and I thought he was cute. We started drinking game and we started doing shots. And this guy was just like free booze, kind of like 
lightened him up because he was a broke ass and I had free booze. So we're playing a drinking game that warmed him up and he'd been drinking. So he probably figured, well, may as well get it on with this girl. Why not? But whenever he was drinking, he was complimenting me a lot. Like you smell nice. You look so good. Really was awkward and really bad. Oh my God. That's all I'm going to say. What turned me off was that the whole time it was happening on my friend's busted ass couch. <laughs> I don't think she knows that. Well, now you do. <laughs> He wore those darn sunglasses and he stopped in the middle to play guitar with the sunglasses naked and then resumed. It was not fun. I feel bad for whoever's guitar that was. That sounds gross. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to do a story time. It's a TMI, so it's kind of gross. I had a one nighter with a guy who shit the bed. Okay. <laughs> This one is a bar hookup story and <laughs> it's quite funny because there's uh, two characters in this one. Of course, the second one is creepier than the first, but the first one's not very good either. All right, here we go. If that kind of thing really grosses you out, you're not going to want to watch. I mean, I'm not going to go into gross detail, but well. So this happened at this bar. I think it was called Berrigan's out in the middle of like rural Ontario somewhere. This is the story of a guy named Big Buck. He was a regular at that bar. People gave him that nickname. I don't really know why. He was a really big guy. I'm assuming if I have to give you a visual of what he looked like, he looked like Guy Fieri if he had eaten those like Alice in Wonderland candy things that make you big. He was big and tall, like very big. We were having some drinks at the bar. You could play your own music on this like jukebox. There was this woman there, drunk out of her mind, who put Thunderstruck by ACDC on repeat. I remember like singing loudly in the bar. Thunder! And another one playing air guitar. The bartender was like this crabby middle-aged woman, had a crush on this big buck guy. He told me that. Just through observation, throughout the night I'd hear her be like, hey big buck there, meh meh meh. Yelling his name and talking to him. And anytime I'd go order a drink though, she wouldn't even ask me what I want. She'd go up to the bar, look at me like, you know, like, what do you want? You're wasting my time. I have some hitting on Big Buck to do. So I'd be like, rum and coke. She wouldn't even say anything. She'd just go make it, slide it over. It's like, and you want a tip? I don't think so. <sighs> Those rum and cokes, man. Woo. The reason I went to that bar, the times that I went home, I didn't want to sleep at my home. If I didn't sleep at somebody else's house, like some dude's house, <laughs> which I would never do that kind of thing today, okay? I was younger and dumber. I would have to stay with my friend and her boyfriend at her boyfriend's mom's house. I didn't want to hear them getting it on all night. You know what I'm saying? I didn't particularly have my eye on Big Buck, but he came over to our table and was like, you guys want a pitcher of beer? And he sat down beside me and I was like, oh, nice gesture, you know? And I was like, pretty tipsy, okay? That pitcher of beer did it though. Drinking rum and cokes all night and then a pitcher of beer. Whew. I know they say beer before liquor, never been sicker. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. It ain't true, not for me. So we're talking, hitting it off. He was very polite, very nice guy. Smelled real nice. Not really my type. I have an open mind. We both had a lot to drink. And he was like, do you want <laughs> I like how she threw in there that he smelled real nice. <laughs> that won't last long come home with me tonight. I have a friend who will bring us. He hasn't been drinking. Drives us out in the middle of nowhere even further. We get to the house, walk in the place. There's this guy watching TV and as soon as we come in, he's like, hey, big buck there. Hey, big buck. You got yourself a big cat. Did I get it big? He's like really hyper. Have you ever seen the- The way she describes this guy is, is pretty funny. She's, <laughs> she gets herself in, into some situations. That's for sure. Original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that weirdo in the van. It's uncanny, okay, the resemblance. Hyper like that too, that's him. I remember thinking, what do you mean big cast? Is that supposed to be like a fat joke? Anyway, we went down to his basement. He had like a little room area there. <laughs> it was like a- But it's funny how she compares the people she meets to people in like horror movies. <laughs> the cast of characters that she meets along the way bed in a bathroom. <laughs> That's all you need. We had a pretty good night. Fast forward. Eventually we both pass out and he was so mad. He had way too much to drink. So I'm sleeping. My leg rolled into something wet, mushy, and cold. So I bolted awake and I'm like, what is that? Push the sheet aside. This guy shit the bed. There was crap everywhere at the bottom of the bed. It's like his butt was up here. I have no idea how it catapulted. I don't know how it made its way down. I was so grossed out and I know <laughs> I have done gross things, <laughs> but for some reason it grossed me out. Look, I get it. Okay. I told- So- <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I just remember where this is going. But I was thinking, 
So she's laying there and she's got poop all over her leg. Does she just like use the blankets to wipe it off? Does she get up and go to the bathroom, use some like soap and maybe toilet paper or something to get it all off? And then go back in the bed? Does she just roll over and go back to sleep? <laughs> uh, I don't know if she gets in that much detail, but she's about to tell the story about the time where she uh, got into a a bad situation where she uh, ruined someone's bathroom that she met online. Another online dating story is what we're about to get into. Um, and the, to compare it to this situation. I told a story where I went to hook up with these two people and they gave me way too much to drink. Like they kept giving me shots. Here, have another shot, have another beer. I ended up getting sick in their bathroom. I can't control what comes out of my body. They had no towels, they had no toilet paper. So, I mean, that's what you get for giving me too much liquor, snobbing me, and then not having anything to clean up with. I remembered a story when I was living with my ex, stinky, ripped underwear, bologna eating roommate. Today. All right, so we're going down a couple of rabbits hole, rabbit holes here. So the story about uh, her meeting these people online happened when she was living with this guy who uh, used to be friends with Pete's and work with her and Pete's, I think, at a call center. So she's going to tell the story about the bologna, bologna eaten roommate. I want to talk about my horrible roommate. I'm gonna admit right now that I was kind of mean to this guy, but because he was annoying and gross. <laughs> Wasn't I singing to my baloney when I was picking up my groceries last time? I think so. What did I sing? You're like singing to baloney, and then I said, "Don't you know Oscar Myers' song?" I was like, "Baloney, baloney," because I had ordered baloney in my in my grocery order. All I was excited about was the baloney. <laughs> I wanted a bologna sandwich and I used to make fun of, remember? We won't name names, but your friend who used to be my roommate uh, right, right, right. and he used to eat garlic bologna in holy underwear. <laughs> <laughs> My first apartment on my own was two bedroom. It was the shittiest apartment I've ever lived in. Didn't even have windows. The slumlord put plexiglass and tape. I was working at a call center. I knew this guy through a friend. We sort of became friends, but he sort of always got on my nerves. Well, try living with him. Huh. I wanted a roommate to share expenses. I had a two bedroom. I mean, it wasn't super expensive or anything because it was such a dump. The landlord was just glad that someone lived there. I was really down on his luck, so I let him move in with me. Oh my God. From the day he moved in, this guy would not leave me alone. Always tried apps with me. And he was not aggressive but he was pushy and he would get this look in his eye like all like I don't know how to do it but it was like a weird look and I knew he was gonna try it came to the point where I was so repulsed by him I would stay at my mom's I wouldn't even be there most of the time some of the things that really pissed me off that he would do when he was not at work he would blare the music he would blare Avril Lavigne for CD like the one that had skater boy he would play that over and over and over <laughs> my neighbors underneath me could hear and they would be like her roommate really likes Avril Lavigne doesn't he? he's driving me nuts I know every word to every song. That and Evanescence, he couldn't sleep unless he was listening to Evanescence. I can't fall asleep when there's emo goth blaring in the background. He had this one pair of underwear, okay? They were gray. I don't know if they were gray from dirt or if they were gray that was the color. Fruit of the Loom underwear for men. And there was a hole at the bottom. He would always walk around and his f would hang out. And I'd come home and I'd be like, really? You really have to wear that? One day I was in my bedroom. This was the last straw for that. I was getting ready. He comes along in those underwear with his hanging out. I'm just Decides to sit on my bed. So I had this guy on my bed. That was it for me. I freaked out. Girls, cooties are real. Another thing he did was watch a lot. And it was like anime. So it was like, I don't know if you've ever watched that, but or hentai or whatever it's called. Oh my god, it's annoying. It was like, <laughs> The whole time. And just knowing his was bare somewhere in the same apartment as me. Mm, I wasn't into him. I feel bad now, kind of, but my mom would even get annoyed at how mean I was with him. We did our own groceries. One day, I came in with my mom with groceries, and I had a big block of cheese. It was a massive block of cheese. It was that big. He comes over, and he nudged up against me, looking over my shoulder at the cheese that I had on the counter. And he's like, can I have a piece? <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so mean because anyone else I would have given you half the block, okay? But him? I didn't oh, I didn't want to give him anything. So I looked at him like with a rude snobby bitch face and I was like <sighs> My mom's like Chantel, give him some <laughs> So I'm like, fine, you can have a small piece. And I cut off like a small one inch piece off the end and he took it and he's like, thanks, I'll put these on my chicken nuggets later. 
Oh, he would buy the grossest things to eat too. He used to buy a pack of lunch meat, like garlic bologna, and he would open the package and leave it open in the fridge and it would smell like garlic bologna every time I opened the fridge. My strawberries tasted like garlic bologna. Everything tasted like garlic bologna. And I was like, do you have to buy garlic bologna? Like this guy would eat lunch meat in his friggin' busted underwear sitting on my sofa and shit. Like what? What did I do to deserve this in a past life? Just little things, you know? And then he brought his cat with him. I love cats. It's not the cat's fault, but it was not fixed. It was always in heat. It seemed like it was always in heat. I don't know. He was always crying with his ass in the air and he was a slob. He would never clean. Ever. So continually yelling at this guy and not even- All that sounds like such a wonderful living experience. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't work out. Even wanting to be in my own place. I was like, you know what? You need to take your Avril Lavigne Skater Boy CD, your one pair of Fruit of the Loom undies, and your garlic bologna, and get the f out of my house. <laughs> I don't ask for stuff. With, with your junk hanging out? <laughs> yeah, my junk hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Stop giving me stares. That's it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I was single at the <laughs> All right, so we're back to the story about um, the the time she had an accident at somebody else's house to compare it to um, the accident that Big Buck had at his own, in his own room. The time, I wanted to have fun. I was very wild at the time. I think I was maybe 21. I was on chat rooms. I think it was the IRC one where I met the other freaks. Well, this was for Ottawa. I wasn't living in Ottawa. It was a big city and I wanted to meet people. So there was nobody in my hometown. At the time I was going through a goth phase and I love David Bowie. I still do. I would wear goth clothes, lacy things, sexy things, big boots. I had been drinking by myself, bad idea, but I had been and I decided to go online. And I had been talking to this guy who lived in Ottawa, found out he worked at a restaurant as like a chef or whatever. He lived with his girlfriend in an upstairs apartment in this old house that her dad owned. He was like, we're looking for another girl to fool around with. I want to try having a threesome. She's bisexual. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, so am I. That's cool. I'm like, I don't have a car. I didn't have a car then. And they didn't. So he's like, how much would it be for a taxi? I'll pay for your taxi. I was like, wow, you must really want it badly. <laughs> There's no women in Ottawa. Population of over a million people. Guess not. I called the taxi company and I asked and they said it would be $120. So I said, okay. I told him how much it was. He said, all right, can you leave now? And it was eight at night, probably like hour and a half drive, give or take. So I call a taxi. The taxi picks me up. I just grab a bag with a change of underwear. You gotta be fresh. <laughs> And a change of underwear, a pack of condoms, and a 40 ounce bottle of liquor that was half finished already. Well, a quarter finished or so. And I think I brought a bottle of soda to chase it with. I was planning on drinking in the vehicle. Idiot me. I figure the cab driver's probably male. I'd show him cleavage, he'll let me drink. <laughs> Picks me up, I have my big bag, I tell him the address. Once we get onto the highway, I open my bag and took out the bottle. And I looked over at him and he looked at me. And it was a younger cab driver and he looked nervous, but he wanted to be cool the whole ride there, you know? He put his two box CD in. Cause I was like, I'm going to a party. And you know, I was like kind of half in the bag. And I'm like, do you mind? Just I'll be careful. He's like, yeah, just be careful. You can drink. Do not do that. <laughs> it's against the law. You will get in trouble. So started drinking. I asked him to stop at a gas station so I could pee. Went for a pee. Then I was getting nervous, you know, cause I don't like meeting people and I'm stranded in this big city. The thing was is that my mom was going by herself to see my aunt in Ottawa. I invited my mom over for like a special sister's night. So I'm sure my mom was happy to get away. My sister was younger then. She wanted probably some alone time. So my mom was up in Ottawa anyway. So I had that in the back of my mind the whole time. Like if anything happens, I can run away there. They probably wouldn't be happy to know that I came up and ruined their thing, but in case. Okay, so remember that bit of information because it does come in handy later you know so he drops me off at the house it's like one of those older homes they were waiting for me outside he and his girlfriend they paid the taxi driver i was like wow nobody's ever spent 120 on me before <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I should have shown up there drunk because I was like, hey, you know, it's probably so annoying. From the get-go, the girlfriend, I don't know what her problem was. She either wasn't attracted to me or she didn't like me or she, and she was jealous. You know what I mean? Because she would, the whole night she was like looking at me like she was, she didn't pay attention to me. She would just give me dirty looks the whole night and I wasn't getting a vibe at all from her. So I was like, okay, whatever. The guy, I kind of got the same vibe. Like he was kind of just like, almost like he was going along with what she wanted. This was a new thing for them, whatever. Couples are annoying when it comes to threesomes. Like either you want to do it or you don't. 
They were around my age. He was tall, kind of geeky looking. He wasn't bad, he was very thin. She was heavy set. At the time I wasn't that big, she was heavier than me. Glasses, no makeup, very plain. So they're like, well, do you wanna go to this local pub for a bit? They're like, for a couple drinks? I was like, yeah, more booze, yeah. But then I was like, oh, we're gonna have to walk. And I had the crappiest shoes. They were like big clonker golf boots. So we walked to the pub. There was like a whole bunch of their friends there. There was like a snobby girl there. She's like, who are you? You know, like I told her and she's like, you came all the way in a taxi. I remember getting like a sampler of all these different kinds of beers. I think it was too What did she tell the friend? <laughs> Other than that they paid for her taxi to get there and she's like, so I could hook up with them. <laughs> like. It doesn't really go into detail. She's just like, the friend's like, oh, okay. Rowdy for their kind, you know? I was like, woo, let's get shots. And I was really drunk and everyone probably thought I was weird. I got the vibe that nobody liked me, pretty much. But I was drunk, so I had drinking a lot. I would drink the whole sampler of beers. I had two tequila shots. Everyone had like a beer. So they were probably thinking, oh my God, what a lush, you know? So I'm like, I'm gonna go outside for a smoke. So I went outside, the guy followed me out there. He's like, I'm sorry if it's not what exactly you thought it would be. And then out of nowhere, he's like, nice taste by the way. And I was like, I just felt like really out of place and disgusting. Like I didn't want to be there. I felt like an object. They made me feel like really low, you know? So I was like, this is f***ing boring. This is pathetic. I'm glad you wasted your money. Anyway, I was stuck there. You know what? That was only for the one way. I'm such a little shit, actually, because I knew that my mom was going up. I didn't tell her this because I knew she wouldn't say no once I was there. I was kind of just gonna like show up the next day and be like, can I hitch a ride back home with you? I spent the night at someone's house. So I didn't tell her about it because she would have been like, it kind of be funny if she showed up and her mom had already left to go home and that she's just stuck in Ottawa. In Ottawa. <laughs> she didn't think that through. Like, no, you know, and worried. So that's what happened because I was like, how am I going to get home? Whenever he said nice to it kind of sounded like he was trying to make me feel more into it. You know what I mean? But he really wasn't. I don't know. He didn't seem like a very sexually forward kind of guy. You know what I mean? We ended up walking back to their house. We get there. One of her girlfriends came back to the place with us. She's like, oh, I'm really tired. I just want to lay in bed. She goes and lays in her bed and her friend goes and lays in bed with her. And I'm in the other room listening. I'm like, can you put David Bowie on? And I'm like, you know, do you have anything else to drink? I ended up having more of my bottle that I had left there in my bag. So he put that music on for me and they just look so bored. And the other girl ignoring me in the other room was giggling with her friend. And I'm like, are they laughing at me? Or you know what I mean? Like it was just so fucking weird. It gets worse. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go in there and see how they act. I go in the room. The minute I get in there, they stop giggling and they look at me. And I'm like, do you mind if I get in bed with you guys? So I get in bed and the girl like kind of just shrinks away. And then after a few minutes, she's like, I think I'm just gonna go to bed. And her friend's like, yeah, I'm gonna go home. So I'm like, okay. She's like, do you mind hitting the light when you leave the room? They're like, you invited me here, you paid $120 for me to get here, and you're acting like a total bitch. Like, what's your problem? And then the guy, the guy was- I'd say she definitely didn't get what they paid for. So she probably wasn't impressed with uh, the uh, drunk lady that showed up. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go to bed. Sorry, I'm just, we're just really tired, you know? I was like, okay. So he's like, here, I'll set you up your own little space. Like, he was nice. And I remember trying to sleep and looking out the window and everything was spinning. Like, it was just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And oh my God. I must have fallen asleep. I woke up early the next morning. Naturally, I, I woke up to the feeling of having to be sick. I'm like, oh shit. I don't even know where the bathroom is. So I ran like through the little hall and it was a small apartment. So their bedroom was right there beside the bathroom. I'm like, they're gonna hear everything. I find the bathroom, get on my knees, start doing my thing. This is gross guys. I'm warning you if you're grossed out. You can't say I didn't warn you. So don't for me later. Turn away. You have three seconds. It's bad. If you've never heard this story before, be prepared. So I, it comes out both ends. And I had a skirt on and a G-string. The barf goes projectile all over the wall. The poop goes all over their floor. No towels, no paper towel anywhere in the bathroom. No toilet paper. So at this point, I was like panicking, but they didn't. So they had $120 to spend on bringing some lady that they don't even know to their home. And they don't even have like Towels, toilet paper, or she said paper towel, nothing. <laughs> the priorities of these people are just, it's baffling. 
wake up. They were still sleeping somehow. I didn't hear any movement. I didn't know what to do. I took my G-string off, cleaned up with some socks and some clothes I had in my bag. I got a sweater or something in there. Anyway, it was disgusting. I smelled bad. I smelled bad. And I was like, Sh I had no money. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I called the taxi and I took it to my aunt's house. Now I was banking on hopes that my mom would I wonder if they had a working shower. I wonder if that would have helped her in any way. I mean, even if she just like rinsed everything off maybe, and even if she was just soaking wet and had to leave the house, like there's water there. She could have used the water at least. But anyway, we weren't there. We don't know. <laughs> and we're not going to think about it anymore. We pay for the taxi. I didn't have a cell phone then either. I get there, tell the cab I'm gonna be right back. I have to get the money. I knock on the door, no answer. I'm like, shit. I knock on the door again, and I see somebody peep through the peephole, and my aunt's like, it's cutie. What the hell? So they answer the door, they look at me, and they're like, you smell bad. What the hell? So I explain everything. I started crying. They were both livid. They were mad at me for doing that, which I don't blame them. So she paid the cab. I went in, I had a shower, had something to eat, had something to drink. Well, at least there's a shower involved here somewhere. Oh, I felt so good just being there. Eventually my mom got over it, but she was mad. Like, you could have been killed, blah, 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 which is true. Hey guys, I'm editing this video and I've noticed that I did not explain what happened after. So I don't wanna leave you guys hanging. So I just wanna say oh, I snuck out of the house and to my aunts after that ordeal with my being sick without waking them up. What happened after when I went home, I never heard from them again. I never heard from him again. I'm assuming they found my mess and just were like, screw this chick i'm not messaging her anymore so yeah so it was just gross that i had rolled my leg into it so i got up i think it was like early <laughs> all right so we're back to big buck's bed <laughs> and she's just rolling over into a pile of poop early early morning while he was still sleeping had a shower after the shower i kind of like nudge him awake I okay there we go she got in the shower this time wanted to go home. I wake him up. Immediately he's sick. He's in the bathroom the whole time. He's like, it's okay. I'm going to be fine in a few minutes. Once I'm fine, we can do round two. And I'm thinking, uh, no, I'm not staying. Are you crazy? Round two, he says. <laughs> well, just wait. The roommate here was singing round two as well. I'm totally like turned off at this point and I'm not feeling good. So I'm just like, I would really just rather go home. So he's like, go upstairs, ask Jeffrey to give you a ride and he will. <sighs> I'm thinking, oh God, that guy on the couch. I don't want to go anywhere with him. <sighs> Might end up wearing my skin. I'll go upstairs. I was desperate. And I'm looking around like, is there anything I can take with me to use as a weapon? <laughs> <laughs> starting to think of things like that like my keys i'm like are you jeff he's like jeffrey yes that's me <laughs> like still hyper the next morning still watching friggin tv i'm like does this guy like move or what anyway i'm like big buck i don't think i said big buck i'm like buck said you can take me home and he's like yeah sure i'll get right on that i can do that it gets worse you're not going to believe this get in the truck you think i'm hyper the whole way there this guy's like on the steering wheel and the radio like what's that band that song like down on the corner and he was like, singing loud for the guy yeah this is a good tune out of nowhere he turns to me and he's like Hey, what do you think there? Can I have a try at you? Thinking like, what do you mean have a try? You want, you want to tell me a joke? Oh my god, the way she... <laughs> Can I have a try at you? <laughs> the way she mimicked this guy. Oh my. <laughs> you want to try to make me laugh? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you and me. Round two. I'll pull over. Round two? What? I was like, just because Buck got some, you think you're going to get some? What the hell's wrong with you? Well, I didn't want him to murder me, so I said, well, I'm kind of tired, so if you could just drop me off. I don't feel well. I'm going to be sick. And I probably would have. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. But then he's like, but if you felt good, you would have wanted to give it a try, wouldn't you? Yeah. So I was like, what do I say? I didn't want to insult him, but so I was like, mm, yeah, I mean, why not? You're a good looking guy. It wasn't his looks. He was crazy. I wonder how does she get herself in these situations and then I remember, oh yes, the alcohol. Crazy. <laughs> Made it back in one piece, thank goodness. I'm rehashing these bad memories for you guys, okay? <laughs> so anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this TMI. Please give it a like, subscribe, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <sighs> Those rum and cokes, man. Woo. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs>
Can you guys top it off? Leave me your love horror stories in the comments below if you want. I hope you enjoyed this Valentine's Day special. You guys are my true Valentines. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. I decided to do a story time. Bad internet encounters. Hey guys, hey, hey guys, hey. How are you? How are you? So. All right, so we get more into her online activities, meeting people online. Now, this is uh, mostly, some before, but mostly after um, breaking up with BB when she tries to venture out again. But then she also talks about the past and how she does the online dating. Anyway, let's get into it. Nothing new going on here. I'm kind of depressed because I'm trying to move on with my life, okay? Why I really don't want to get back into dating and just move on, besides just not being ready. It's depressing getting back in the dating scene, and the dating scene in 2020 is online, right? And online dating is so depressing to me. Interacting with the male species via internet. I did meet BB online, but what are the odds, you know? It can happen that you meet somebody. That's not the problem. The problem is all of the ones you're not interested in, the big turnoffs, you have to get through first. Like some of the creeps you find online. I was talking with a friend and they were telling me how they're dating and they're meeting people on Tinder. I don't know what Tinder is. I've never used Tinder, you know, so I mean I've been in relationships forever, so she met this guy and she's like, he's really hot and I really like him and everything and the thing is, was so awesome, but I was kind of turned off by his taste in music. Do you get turned off by a person's taste in music? For me, it would have to be really out there. When I was in high school, I used to get together with this boy just to neck, just to make out. <laughs> That's what you do. You get together with a boy. You're gonna go to his place. You're gonna make it with to music you know well at least i did <laughs> start doing her thing and he would put on Black Sabbath Iron Man is like hot. Black Sabbath is a cool makeout choice. Another guy, I hung out with him a few times, you know, made out in his basement. Well, one day he puts on music and guess what he puts on? Mbop by Hanson. <laughs> All right, game over. Time to walk out of the room. You can't make out to Mbop by Hanson. Those, uh, I'm not gonna make out to a band who didn't even hit puberty yet. You know that Mbop do ba ba boom. <laughs> oh, that's great. As you shouldn't. No. I didn't tell you guys this, but it's nothing to gloat about. One day I was bored and I decided, why don't I just have a look-see? Just a look-see. And where did I decide to have a look-see? I mean, just looking at like personal ads. Craigslist of all places. Now, you guys never told me about this. Or maybe you did, but I forgot. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've used online dating, okay? So the last time was like 2010 or 11. I don't even know how it works anymore. Plenty of fish is still around. Grinder, Tinder. There's all these apps, you know? You know how you can use Uber? Uber Eats to order food, you can go on Tinder or Grindr and order ass at like two in the morning. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that Tinder and Grindr are like huge meat markets. You go there if you want to hook up, not find love. Well, from what I discovered when I went on Craigslist, it's like, even for me, I was like, what the? First of all, you go on the personals. I don't even know if I selected a city. I just went on there. They're talking in code. So it's like M, F, M. So I guess that's like male for male, female for male. That's the shitty part about not being in a relationship. You know, when you're in the mood. So I looked in like, maybe I could just have like casual hookup. I could try it. Plus, be more lover story times, right? <laughs> kidding. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, her uh, story times drastically change when she meets uh, Dom online, also known as Natter. So she went looking for a story. She definitely found a years long story on uh, I think it was plenty of fish that she found him on. One of the dating apps, anyway. I'm browsing through, and my eyes just automatically scan for anything that says BBW. It's just easier. As a fat girl, it's just easier, okay? So I click on looking for BBW. No picture. Call me shallow. You have to be attracted to somebody for something like this, okay? This is not a relationship. I don't want to get to know him better, his character. I don't give a shit, you know? I just want the D. I need to see what you look like because I need to be attracted somewhat. <laughs> so no picture. Anyway, we could get to that later. So I message back. Hey, BBW here. I don't even know what I said. Like, how are you? I saw your ad. Something generic and stupid. There's a lot of fluff. Not even two minutes later after I send that email. Ding! Replies. I'm like, buddy. It's kind of a red flag for me. You know, guys, if you want to not seem overly desperate, wait at least maybe like an hour to reply back. First thing I read, I notice there's an image loading. Hey, baby. Bam. Boom. Right in my face. The biggest 
turnoff for me is getting a dick pic. Unless I ask you for nudes, don't send them. What's going on in his brain? What planet is he from that he thought that that would be attractive, even 2%? I'm sorry, but I don't find lack of manscaping attractive. I just don't. <laughs> I was gonna reply like nice bush or something, but then I was just like, this guy seems weird, seems desperate, seems like a creep. So I'm not gonna reply at all. Well, I had to like block him because he kept sending pictures of his. I think he finally figured out how to get it to focus on it because maybe that's what he was doing. But like, hey baby, you like how my mm, looks, baby? Again, using the word baby. I don't know, I guess it's less creepy than like my sweet peach or something stupid. I'm very cynical, okay? I can't help it. I ended up having to block this person. I just don't want to go through that. I just don't have the energy. So I'm just going to wait till I do or until love finds me. Maybe I was in the wrong section. I don't think it matters. There's always a creep in every section. I have trouble with casual. If it's good, I'll be like, I love you. <laughs> the next week. So yeah, times like that, I miss Phoebe because I was like familiar. I still do have love for him. Still infatuated. We're just so comfortable with each other. So I guess I'm just going to stay single. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and listening to me and my concerns about the dating world. It's going to have to be somebody who's comfortable with being on camera though because they're going to be on film. BB was the type of guy who didn't want to be on camera and I respect that. I don't blame him and I understand why. I want to be able to like do videos with this person especially if we're going to be doing things in life together. Which is funny because she's uh, tried to get Natter on there and she, it worked and uh, same with Sala. He's been also on there. Lots. <laughs> She found her online loves. Didn't really work out for her, but at least we didn't have any wifeys. Traveling, I don't want him to be all grumpy whenever I'm like, smile, the camera's on. Like, just be comfortable with it, you know? So you gotta look for someone that's like that. I know Pete's is, but you know, he's my friend, so. You know, I really do get happy seeing a lot of the same people in my comments. Just every time I upload, um, oh, there's so many. It's nice to like show your appreciation. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a whole week of mukbangs. Every day, mukbang of my choice. Because I want to. <laughs> so every day, you're gonna be getting a mukbang in story time. For a straight week. Oh yes. I feel like doing it, and that's what I'm gonna do. So today, I thought I would talk about, I don't know why I always do this to myself. I don't know. I was bored, desperate, feeling a little frisky. <laughs> I've been so frisky in my life. <laughs> like I wanted to talk to somebody about something something. <laughs> Is that what you young uns call it these days? Something something? So I signed up for Tinder again for like a day. And in that one day before I deleted my- Okay, so the last video we watched of her talking about uh, the online dating. She was living with BB I think at that point still. But was just transitioning into the new home here with Pete's. So now this is a few months later and she's back on there. Getting more stories. Gathering more stories to tell us. My account in a haste. You won't believe some of the people I got the pleasure or displeasure of talking to. Let me tell you about these people. Like it shows you your matches, right? Like people who like you or swipe right, I guess, or whatever. There's this one guy, he was so hot. This guy was really buff, like super hot. He looked like a model, like an Instagram model. He probably was. He had white, white teeth, beautiful black hair, blue eyes, big body, like buff and shiny and i was like "Ooh, it sounded too good to be true i thought i'd give it a shot so he messages me we're talking this guy i mean it's kind of a turn off for me when a guy's so vain like he had more pictures on his profile than kim kardashian okay whatever this is tinder we're talking and then he says to me you know i like a big girl i like to do a big girl is what he said i like to see if i can handle it, it makes me feel so strong being able to lift a big girl off the ground and i'm just like oh wow thanks so basically you're using me as an exercise tool to feel better about yourself to boost your ego. Next. I love licking my fingers. So I was in kind of a bad mood when this nice guy finally messaged me. I, I, it was a nice guy. In my profile I set up, I just said just looking for fun because I don't want a relationship, okay? I don't. Especially not on Tinder. I don't know. I'm not saying you can't meet somebody nice. I mean, I did meet BB on Plenty of Fish, but this poor nice guy messages me. Me, horny AF, and this poor guy's like, I'm really, really a nice guy. I'll cook you dinner. I'll buy you flowers. Block. Next. <laughs> I just wasn't in the mood for that. <laughs> when has sex just become so weird? You know what I mean? Where's all the people who just want a little old fashioned in out? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I had a few of these. Hey, can I have your email so I can send you a picture of my beep? 
And there's this one guy. I shouldn't have put my real name, but I put my first name. I was like, no, no, why he asked me? Every single thing he said, he would end it with my name. Like, how are you doing today, beautiful Chantal? Where are you from, Chantal? You look very beautiful, Miss Chantal. Miss Chantal or Miss Chantal? Like, dude, you're gonna make me want to change my name. <laughs> like, seriously. What the heck is the matter with you? You know that old saying? Don't say my name, you'll wear it out. Remember a kid would annoy you in school? Well, he was that guy. Immediate turn off. Like, immediate turn off. Yep. Just a lot of turn offs. I never learn. I keep going back. And there was this guy. Legit serial killer. Like, every single person I talk to on there, I think, is it serial killer? So I look for signs. You know, I watch way too many Netflix true crime documentaries or manhunt forensic files. I picture the host of forensic files in his voice. Or one of those stern, serious female narrators from one of those shows talking about my case if I accept a date with one of these guys. Chantel from Ottawa was a lonely 36-year-old woman just looking for a good time. Tragically, her head was found in the sewer just 27 miles west of her hometown. Something like that. Now, I am a bit paranoid. I was kind of waiting for a story like that, but, uh, she's made it out <laughs> of the online dating scene safely so far. Sure, I'll admit it. However, my instinct told me with this one guy because he was like, can I tell you something? Promise you won't be weirded out. I hate when people do that. Like, if I tell you, you have to promise not to get mad or not to get scared. How can I make a promise based on a reaction, a hypothetical, like, react? I don't know what, what you're going to tell me. So I was like, all right, fingers crossed <laughs> behind my back. So he's like, if we hook up, would you let me strangle you? He was like, you could tap me and I would stop right away. No questions asked. Would you let me tie you up with duct tape? Thinking of my head in a sewer on the six o'clock news. Yeah, no, thanks. So some people are into that, but not me. No way. One guy was too pushy, like desperate. Like you look desperate when you're pushy. There should be like how to turn on a woman 101. I know women are comp. I think that's what she likes though. when she gets uh, the a lot of attention from them. So I'm pretty sure that's a similar way as to how her and Adder started talking was because he just kept pursuing her. Complex, but ladies, you have to agree there's just some universal rules when it comes to damn men turning women off on these date sites. No dick pics in, within the first week, okay? <laughs> this guy was super pushy and I wasn't attracted to him at all. At all. And I'm sorry to sound shallow. <laughs> oh man. She's got sauce in her face throughout this whole thing and it just keeps moving from like the top to the bottom. <laughs> She has a camera, a mirror right in front of her, but she's still sauce all over the face. It's a little dist it's a it's a little distracting sometimes. Hello, but I don't know you, so obviously if I'm not, I, have, I go by looks right away. Initially, I accepted, he had messaged me, and he didn't want to talk. Like, I don't like a guy I can't have a conversation with, who just doesn't care about what you have to say. Like, almost instantly, he was like, let's meet up and go for coffee. I was like, can I find out more about you first? Like, what if I, what if I don't like you? What if I don't want to meet you for coffee? Tell me something about yourself. Give me something. I said, well, can we talk a bit first? We'll talk when we go for coffee. I'd really like to wait a little bit and get to know you first. It's just coffee. So I block, I uh, didn't block him, but I, I'm like, cut the communication with him. He tries to get back in like by liking my profile again or whatever. However Tinder works. Swipe right, I guess. I'm just like, dude, I'm not going to talk to you again. Buzz off. So that's it. I appreciate you watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. So those are some of her uh, experiences with the online dating after BB. I wonder how long it took her to have all those experiences so if she was just on for a week and off or if she uh, continued on after that. Bye guys! Hi! Well, I know that she continued on after to find like Natter and she was on it a lot but just for those stories. Jeez, it could have been a night. Bye. <laughs> hey guys, hey, how are you? How are you? I have McDonald's again. I love McDonald's. I don't wanna hear it. My life is falling apart right now, but it will be rebuilt. I have a story time for you guys. Oh yes, I know you like it. Now the story time, you guys, there's some things I just asked myself, should I be telling them? Probably not, but because I love you guys so much, I guess I will do it. I guess I will humiliate myself for you guys. This is from my ho days, ho days, ho days.
I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Don't let anyone ever shame you. If you're being safe and you're not hurting anyone or yourself and you want to have 100 partners, you're allowed to do that. Don't let people make you think it's immoral. But anyway, it was a total hoe. So this is from why I moved away to university. First time I went to university. <laughs> Back then, there was no plenty of fish, WhatsApp, Tinder. If you wanted to meet people online, you were in these crappy ass chat forum engine things, MIRC or AO. Well, old school. I was in a chat room. I was lonely. That's a big reason why I didn't stay in university. I missed Pete. He was my best friend at the time. I missed my family. You get the idea. I was homesick. So I dropped out, got a job. We all know how that goes. One night, I'm perusing chat forums, looking for some companionship or some fun. I don't even know if I knew what I was looking for. I saw an ad from a dude. The username was something like ball and gag. <laughs> my wife and I are open. So I had to listen for a little bit to be like, all right, which story is this? <sighs> this is a weird one. This one, she does... <laughs> she answers the funniest... I don't know if they're ads or whatever she's doing here, but she gets herself in some weird situations. Like, I don't know why she agrees to go along with them. But here she's going to uh, go to another couple's house to be the third wheel. <laughs> Oh, this one's weird. Yeah, and this, I think, happened, yeah, so this happened um, before she started dating Beats. We were looking for a woman between the ages of whatever, whatever, to have ongoing encounters with. I messaged back. I don't know, it was impulsive. Curiosity got the better of me this time, I'll say. So I reply to the ad. Gives me the address, blah, blah, blah. Asks me if I have fishnet stockings. I'm like, I do, but I have chubby legs. So my legs look like deli ham wrapped in casing or something. He's like, that's good. My wife and I are in the mood for pork tonight. If you're about to hurl, it gets worse. I arrive at their house for making dinner. I like describing what these people look like. <laughs> I shit you not. So the guy looked exactly like like Tobias from Arrested Development and Scary Movie. The woman looked exactly the crazy mother from the movie Carrie. Same hair, was uncanny, everything. I myself wasn't attracted to them physically, but they seemed like nice people and they hang out with them and see how it goes. I wasn't just gonna like run away, <laughs> although I should have. I go in, they give me wine. I'm drinking like the whole bottle. <laughs> and the woman's like, wow, you sure like to drink, huh? And I'm thinking, lady, if I'm gonna be making out with you, I need to be drunk. <laughs> the guy is making dinner, chopping vegetables for a salad, and he's got these long green onion scallions and he like like as if it was like a twizzler or a spaghetti noodle i'm making a mental note to myself like okay no french kissing for that guy gonna have scallion breath uh, they also had a pet squirrel like a rabid squirrel it was just like a wild squirrel looked terrified of them all the time and its name was sade because the guy was obsessed with sade and that's all we listened to and he had like posters of her like these album things of hers framed on the walls and he was like cooking and singing smooth operator, no need to ask, he's a smooth operator. Sade, but name your squirrel Sade. We eat dinner. They made salad and gnocchi. I don't know if I'm saying gnocchi right, but I know he wasn't. Unless he was, but it drove me nuts the way he said it. I was like, I hope you like gnocchi. What the hell is that? <laughs> uh, actually, I don't really like gnocchi. <laughs> But I ate it. So after dinner, every time we would change rooms, it's like, let's retire to the salon and get comfortable, shall we? I think he was like a maybe a professor or something. The way he talked all like pretentious. He had like a lot of crappy literature that you would only read if you were teaching it or learning it. On his shelves, comes over and like starts rubbing my shoulders. He's like, I hope you don't mind. My wife and I love to sit naked. Thought maybe we'd get comfortable and sit naked. He's like, you don't have to. If you don't mind, we would like to. What am I going to say? So I'm like, yeah, go ahead. They get naked. He's sitting there on the settee as he called it. His legs crossed, totally nude, smoking a pipe. Extra in my head, I'm like, I'm definitely not kissing this guy. Pipe and onion breath, no. She's on this half couch thing. She's got one leg up, one leg down. She's spread eagle with crappy literature in an apartment full of book dust and a rabid squirrel named Sade. All I could think is, girl, you're gonna get yourself a UTI sitting like that. <laughs> After a few drinks and small talk, he says, why don't we retire, again with the retire, to the bedroom, see how we feel. Like, I don't know why she hasn't left yet. Why is she still here? This sounds like a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And he talked creepy too. Are you hiding young girls somewhere in my closet or in a box? That's the vibe I got. You go to the- Yeah, see, she gets the vibe, but she still stays. <laughs> 
Uh, I think she said it's her morbid curiosity, which that explains it, I guess. The bedroom there's a big bed and then there's a chair so i'm sitting on the chair they get on the bed and pat the bed like for me to come sit and i'm like oh no i'm gonna have to like assert myself and like why did i do this why i'm like well i saw that your ad honestly i saw that your ad said no pressure because it did it said like no pressure no pressure his thing said no pressure so i think what i'm gonna do if you don't mind is just observe like <laughs> instead of saying i'm gonna go home or something i said i'm gonna observe part of my sick mind wanted to see what they were gonna do everybody i meet pretty much everybody i wonder things like that i wonder what their love making habits are like and i picture them doing it picture what their old face is like well i said you're gonna miss out but all right sure no pressure honey kind of hot that you're gonna be watching Feel free to take care of yourself, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Next thing I know, this guy's up on all fours on the bed. It looked like he's ready to like pounce on his wife. He does, he pounces on her. He sounds like he's from the animal kingdom. He's making every animalistic noise. Her, she needed an exorcist. You know the part, the movie The Exorcist where Reagan is possessed and flopping on the bed? That was her, I'm not kidding. Just like, oh, she was possessed. I'm not kidding. I felt bad for the squirrel. I should have let it free. <laughs> that was one of my encounters. That was a bizarre situation. Situation. Did I end up seeing them again? No. Did I learn my lesson? No. So unfortunately for me, I have... But does Chantel ever learn her lessons? No. More crazy story times. Might be a good thing for you guys because you like when I embarrass myself. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this crazy story time. Maybe for a recipe cook bang, I could do ganaki. <laughs> Anyways, good night. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. I have a story for you today. O M F G. I was catfished. Okay. Okay. Get this. Okay. This is probably not a video for the younger audience. That's for sure. In 2004, when I was finished high school, so I went away to that volunteer program, came back, went for a year of high school. Most of my friends had dropped out. I was going to school alone or were finished. I decided that I would go to university right out of high school. Bad idea for me. And I would move in with my aunt, who at the time lived in Ottawa, Ontario. I decided to move up there in January. I decided to start in the winter semester for school. I would live with her in her apartment. She lives in Jamaica now and at the time she lived in Ottawa where I went to university. At the time that I was moving, she wouldn't be there. She was gone away for two weeks to Jamaica. At the time I was emotionally dependent and I needed help. I mean, you know, I was moving away, going to school. There wasn't really anybody there for me when I got there. So I had the place to myself. I was younger, <laughs> kind of careless. Anyways, so I moved in, had my own room, my own computer in there. You guys remember the chat room IRC had different chat rooms and things? I ended up out of loneliness in the Ottawa chat room, one of the Ottawa chat rooms talking to some guy started talking to me I can't remember his name we talked often he described himself as pay attention to this six foot four short blondish hair like dirty blonde green eyes and athletic build okay a kind of alarm went off like is he for real you know sounds too perfect or whatever but no it could just be he looks like that whatever so this story here she kind of gets herself in a two-for-one situation So I was like, ooh, okay. I normally have more of a thing for, for brunettes, for men that have dark hair, but I mean, I don't discriminate, right? If I like a guy, I like a guy. So he's like, well, why don't we meet? Why don't I come over? You know, your aunt's gone, it's perfect. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, I was like excited. Like we could, you know, get together. <laughs> okay, seemed like such a nice guy, but don't they always? Sorry, you might not want to hear about this, babe. <laughs> it was a nightmare, so. <laughs> I caught him in a lie right off the bat because he's like, okay, I'm gonna catch the bus. I'm like, the bus? You told me you drove. Like, you told me I had a BMW though. <laughs> I don't care if you take the bus. Why lie? You know? <sighs> anyway, so I'm like, you know, really anxiously awaiting this. I'm, I'm really nervous. Like, really nervous. I hate blind dates. I hate meeting people for the first time. I don't know what to expect. And you're like, really like me, you know? I'm like, I didn't lie about how I look. But... So I hear a knock at the door. Take a deep breath. I open the door. I was like disappointed because I expected it to be him, right? And there were two guys standing there at the door. I'm like, yes. I thought they had the wrong door. One of the guys was like, Chantal? I'm like, yeah. Like, how do you know my name? He's like, it's me. Whatever his name. Whatever the f his name was from IRC. I was like, what? Okay, let me break it down. The blonde hair he supposedly had was long, stringy, greasy brown hair, black, with like faded green streaks in it. He had a bit of, I just hit puberty stubble on his face, even though he was older than that. His six foot four was more like five foot seven. Uh, what else? His green eyes were brown. <laughs> His body type was more like, I'm malnourished, but I drink beer. <laughs> you 
get what I'm saying? Not what I expected. And it's not just that he looked like that. It's just that he was a liar, you know? Beside him was a tall, probably six foot four guy, athletic build, brown hair though, and blue eyes. I was so confused. So I'm like, who's this guy? He's like, I'm sorry. Uh, my cousin called me last minute. He was in town and he really wanted to come with me to meet you. These two guys were looking for girls on the internet and Chantel happened to be the one that says, hey, come on over. <laughs> Uh, let's see where this goes. I was like, uh, okay. So I didn't want to be rude and leave them standing out there. So I just let them in. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. Immediately they go to my aunt's liquor bar. The jock guy, the big guy, apparently who was a hockey player, total douchebag, no matter what he was, opens the liquor, starts drinking. So I'm just sitting there like... You know, I think I was just too shy to say anything and question him. So I said, well, I didn't know you were bringing anybody. And then as I said that, the guy, <laughs> the hockey player guy, I don't even know his name either. He's like flexing his arms. He's like, what, you don't think I'm hot? <laughs> Side, I was like, nope. <laughs> I mean, on the outside, he was handsome, but... Ugh. It takes a lot more than good looks to turn me on. Sorry, but so I'm like, I'll be right back So I went to go walk towards the bathroom the greasy haired freak comes up behind me as I'm suspecting grabs me starts Licking like a fucking cow licks a salt lick the side of my face here <laughs> Kept licking my face. I'm like, oh, that's the grossest thing. I don't know I don't know what men all men out there never lick a girl's face. Okay, we <sighs> I don't know, I don't know, comment below if there's any women who like that. I don't know any women. I don't know any women. I don't you know she's wearing makeup, so he's just licking all of her makeup off. <laughs> Gross. At all. Who like the entire side of their face being licked and drooled on. No. I could smell his breath on my face like the whole night until I got to shower. <laughs> So yeah, so that was, uh, that was lovely. I turned around, I'm like, you know, like kind of, mm. I was like, oh, I just have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. He's like, <laughs> he grabs my hair. He's like, fucking tongue fucks my ear. And he's like, hurry back. Oh, I wish her bathroom had a window. I wish her bathroom had a window. Then the jaw guy, he's like, come here for a minute. He's like bossy. I'm like, why? He's like, just come into the other room with me for a minute. I'm like, whatever, I'll humor him. I'm like, I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll be all right. Go in the room, sits down on my computer chair, pulls out his cell phone. He's like, there's a girl I'm seeing. We're in love, but she's married and she won't break up with him. Like, suddenly turns into a fucking Dr. Phil session. And meanwhile, I'm like, what? Ah, oh. she gets off by hearing me get jobs from other women. <sighs> I thought I'd seen it all. I thought I'd seen it all. I'm like, I'm suing IRC. This is bullshit. <laughs> this is fucking bullshit. He calls her. He's like, yeah, babe, I'm with a girl here. What do you want us to do? And I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not having any part of this. I'm not having any part of this. I'm like, no. I'm like, no. I'm like, you guys gotta go. I'm like, this is not what I thought it was. I'm like, my aunt's gonna be home sooner than I thought. I forgot that, you know, I made up every excuse I could think of at the time. I was like, no, you gotta go. It's like, just five minutes. He pulls down his pants, starts touching his wiener. And I don't want a wiener shame. I've been with some guys who've had small wieners. As long as they know what they're doing. But this guy was like... He had like a micro penis. I don't know if you know what a micro penis is, but it's like an actual thing. So he had a micro penis. It was just horrible. It was just horrible. Bye. You gotta go. <laughs> Finally, I was insistent enough. I think in my tone of voice, they could gather that I was being very serious and, you know, threatening my aunt to come home and all this other stuff. They finally left. That's the last I heard of them. <sighs> Thank goodness. That was just horrible. I mean, that's the downfall of meeting people online. So <laughs> well, another one of those stories where you're surprised she got out alive. <laughs> at a face-to-face -face first, but then you have exceptions like BB. Like I met BB online and he's, he's my BB. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my ex-lovers with BB. I know I have in the past, but it just kind of feels weird a little bit. I don't know what he's thinking, you know? So the story about my Spanish lover, his name was Angelo and he was from New Jersey. And I'm going to start off by saying this happened in one internet chat. That's funny because, yeah, BB is there a lot of the times when she's telling stories, but, you know, sometimes she'll just tell weird stories and not it not be about like people she's hooked up with or trying to date um but i can just picture bb sitting there and you know he's playing video games watching tv whatever he's doing and then she says something and you know she says something that's like what when we hear it but you imagine bb's face when he hears it and he just kind of has to look sideways and then keep playing his game keep watching tv because we don't hear him like chime in and be like, Chantel, what were you thinking? <laughs>
I mean, he'll, he'll talk in some of them, but not voluntarily, usually. That was kind of new, you know what I mean? Like, we were using AOL <laughs> chat, and I was a lonely teenager. I was 16, and I decided to go online and chat with people. I don't remember what kind of chat room it was, if it was a singles chat room or what. This guy, NJ guy, like New Jersey guy or something, I can't remember his name, popped up. We got to talking, we got really... So this is another one that uh, should have been included in her teen years. Um, once you listen to it, she talks about being, <coughs> um, being with this guy while, like, they have a long-distance relationship while she's traveling in the youth group that she was with. Uh, but it is a story of meeting, dating people online, so that's kind of why it's in with this one instead of that one instead of the the uh, teen years videos that we watched on another stream really close i think i lied to him about my age i'm pretty sure i did i don't remember what i told him but i lied to him off the bat which is wrong you shouldn't do this i learned my lesson through this definitely we started a relationship we became really close i fell in love with this guy as far as i know i was very insecure back then i thought i'm online i can be whoever i want to be you know we were talking about celebrities we find attractive his favorite he said was mandy moore i was like mandy moore okay she is pretty she was big back then you know i described myself as looking kind of like her i said i had blondish hair I was in tall. I wasn't. <laughs> Duh. Surprise! <laughs> So he described himself, whatever, I don't even remember. We never saw a picture of each other. This whole relationship, never. He would ask for pictures of me, and I would, I don't know, just find some excuse. Or I'd send him, like, a blurry picture of someone else. Total fucking liar, I know. He did the same to me. I asked him for a picture once, and he sent me a picture of, like, it was so blurry, I couldn't make out what it was. And he did that first, so it's not like he was doing it, because I did it. So he must have been hiding something, too. So I fell completely for this guy. I called him my angel. He even let me talk to his mom. Like, it got serious. I went away to this Katimovic program where we were traveling around Canada. I remember telling him I was going on a trip to New York to visit my grandpa when he lived in New York. And he's like, oh my God, you're gonna be so close. Come visit me. I just couldn't do it. I'm like, he's gonna know I'm lying. The local part of me was like, you'll have time to lose weight and become who you say you are. When I look back, I'm so mad at myself because you know what? Like, why was I insecure? Why didn't I just be myself? I would have met somebody who liked me for me. It just makes me mad that I felt that bad about myself, that I wasn't like perfect, blonde, petite, whatever, that I had to lie. You know what I mean? And a lot of people do that even to this day your average troll probably in the same situation they use someone else's picture or they're not truthful about how they look it's because they hate themselves and that's exactly what i was going through so he was disappointed that i wouldn't see him and we got into a fight then i moved away for seven months and went to this katima vic thing and every single day every single day i talked to him on the phone every single day he would call me and we would stay up late talking on the phone he got on people's nerves this one boarding family i was staying with during my time away he would like yell at me for being on the phone so much like la sister sister I was like, whoa, okay. I felt really bad. So he's like, I want to see you. And while I was in Katimovic, I sent him a big Valentine's Day box. I went and bought a teddy bear and all these other cute things. And I sent it to him. We were serious. This online relationship went on for like probably two years. Apparently he had a really good job. And he would offer all the time. He'd be like, I'm going to get a plane ticket. I'm going to come see you. And I did this twice where I said yes. Because I thought, you know, it gives me enough time. I'm going to lose weight. He's going to like me when he sees me and I canceled on him. He bought the ticket twice and I actually canceled on him twice. I feel like shit for doing that to him. Poor guy. The last time I canceled on him, it got us in a big fight. He wouldn't talk to me like for the longest time. I had to keep calling and begging for him to talk to me. You know, I'd say, I'm so sorry. So after time, he would eventually forgive me. And we were saying, I love you. Like it was intense, you know, but I knew I had the secret. Like I was lying to him, but the thought of losing him scared me. The way he talked was so sexy. I think he was from Ecuador. So I totally catfished him. So one day he was just like, I think he just put two and two together. We were on the phone. I was back home at this point. And he was like, you know what? He's like, I think you're overweight. I think you're fat out of the blue. I'm like, well, why do you say that? You know? And then he listed all the reasons. Like, took him two years to figure it out. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. So finally I admitted it. And he totally stopped talking to me. Just like that. Just like that. For two years, were you not in love with the person that you were talking to? But the thing is, of course I was lying to him. Like, that's the thing with catfishing. There's two so- <laughs> I went to get a shot of this donut she's eating got frosting all over it and it looks like fruit loops and i mean catfishing is never okay to do
do but at the same time it allows you to be somebody or not and what's so wrong with that is that i should have just been okay with who i was you know it took me a long time to just be okay with who i was what's ironic about all that is that back then i wasn't even that big but because society is constantly throwing it in your face that there's a certain standard of beauty and we're all afraid to be who we want to be i was just afraid especially at 16 you know and we just got so involved i just couldn't tell him the truth so i was like really you're not even gonna at least wait to see what i look like it's just like she's fat and never mind for all i know he could have been overweight he could have been ugly like who knows you know like i'm not shallow like that i think he was just betrayed and hurt that i lied to him and this whole time he was in love with the idea you know what i mean the idea of me i was like sorry buddy you're not getting any mandy more <laughs> So that was my lover. And I say lover because, I mean, it was a two-year thing and it was intense. I don't really have a lot of time to describe in detail about things, but, you know, it, it was intense. I never met a girl like you before. Your personality's awesome. Wasn't enough. I wish him all the best. I hope he's finally with his Mandy Moore fucking lookalike today. Whatever. <laughs> Some people are not attracted to overweight people. I get that. But at the same time, it's like you're just evaluating an entire person based on their weight. I don't know. I guess I'm just not like that. So it's hard for me to understand, you know? Like, if you ask me, even though I'm overweight, are you attracted to overweight men? My immediate response is not really, you know? Of course, like, I prefer someone in shape or whatever. But at the same time, I think I could fall in love with an overweight person based on how they are. It's a lot of different things. It's not just black and white like that. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye! I have to pee so bad. Every time I say that to my cram, I go, I have to pee. TMI! <laughs> I'm totally TMI. The next story I was going to tell you guys about is what I did for a Klondike bar. Okay, so here's another story that uh, should have been in the teen years as well, but it's a, it's a little bit more of a TMI story. It's kind of a sad story, actually, but uh, something that uh, she did when she was a teenager for Klondike Bar or a joint, but either way, not good stuff. One of my best friends at the time, she lived with her boyfriend. I was maybe 16 going on 17, something like that. I'm 16, 16 going, going on 17. 17. There used to be parties at her house all the time. And when there wasn't parties, I would just be hanging out there, bumming weed off of her dealer boyfriend, okay? I'm sure he got sick of me. Oh my God, wait till you guys hear how mean we were to this boyfriend of hers. I'm friends with him today and we laugh about these things. On this one particular occasion, I was like a broke teenager. I had no money. I wanted to get high. So when I had no money, he would make me do weird things for a week. This time for a joint, he wanted me to go out in the Street, hold on my pants and slap my ass and go caca caca. So I got outside, went in the street, pulled down my pants and started going caca caca. People were looking at me weird. Across the street there was this elderly couple that always sat outside. A lot of elderly people live there. So they were looking at me. So they were inside, enjoyed my joint that I worked hard for. You know the hours are going by and I get the munchies like mad hungry. You know so I just sometimes went through their fridge. They had not much in the fridge but in the freezer they had this box of Klondike bars. I was like yo can I have a Klondike bar? So he's like, you want a Klondike bar? What would you do for a Klondike bar? You know, like the classic saying, what would you do for a Klondike bar? And I'm like, what would I do for a Klondike bar? I don't know. I just liked being weird back then, entertaining people. So I was like, what do you want me to do for a Klondike bar? Name it. So there's this older man that lived at the end of the street, okay? He was mysterious because I don't know who he lived with. I don't know what his deal was. He was always from morning till night sitting on a fold out lawn chair in his yard. And the guy was in a vegetative state or completely senile. Every time you would try to talk to him, he'd walk by. He would just be always staring blankly ahead, no expression, just like bad for the guy. Poor guy. Like, I hope he had someone looking after him. He must have, right? I don't know. Anyway, so my friend. She says she feels bad for him, but uh, not bad enough to not do what she's about to do for a Klondike bar. Friend's boyfriend's like, I want you to go to the man at the end of the road and I want you to lift your shirt up and flash him and shove it in his face. Elder abuse. And I'm thinking, I wonder if he would react to that. He hasn't been reacting to anything, so I wonder. So, of course, I did it. I'm not proud, but I did it. That should be my quote. I'm not proud, but I did it. I'm like, you better give me the Klondike bar for this, you know? So I go outside. It's like nighttime. And he's just sitting there, no expression. I approach him and I'm like, doing one of these numbers? Like, nothing. So where was I? Oh yeah, it's sad. It's really sad. I lift my shirt and my bra up and I'm just standing there like this and still the same thing. No reaction. So I, st 
start swinging my boobs? Nothing. Easiest flashing ever. I used to flash a lot back then. Big deal. I earned my Klondike bar. So that's what I did for a Klondike bar. I flashed a completely vegetative, senile, elderly person. And you know what? It wasn't even worth it because the Klondike bars were freezer burnt. The chocolate tasted stale. We used to be really mean to this boyfriend of hers because like she was mean to him with me. Part of our bonding was making fun of her boyfriend. Before they were dating, he used to come over to her place. He was dating one of her best friends. And then my friend found out that that friend was screwing her boyfriend. So she started dating this guy as like revenge. They bonded over the infidelity. You know what I mean? I didn't like him at first. I was a possessive friend. I always had her all to myself. And then he came along. She didn't really like him that way at first. Eventually, I don't know if out of convenience or a rebound, they got together. My friend was so funny. She would call me. Remember whenever friends used to call each other? You'd lay on the ground in the living room and just talk on the phone for hours. She would call me. I'd pick up the phone and all I'd hear is laughing on the other end. And I knew it was going to be something funny. All I'd hear is, <laughs> This is when they live together. She's like, I found his porn stash. So every time I'd go over, I'd be like, I know guys have porn, but we used to rub it in. He would read like weird porn, like, you know, like the bizarre porn. Just always used to pick on him. It was bad. We always imitate him. He had like no lips. So every time he would say like, her mom's name was Sue. So every time mom would give him something, she'd be like, thanks Sue. Oh my God. We were so mean. We were mean to his face about it, but he would just be like, shut up fat ass. <laughs> it wasn't out of maliciousness or anything. Anyways, guys, thanks for spending time with me and listening to my crazy weird story <laughs> see you later guys bye hello it's me i'm about to do a mukbang in a cheap front lace week no i'm not going through a midlife crisis come back in five years borderline by madonna a cappella style everyday miriam something in the way you love me won't let me be this is five years later <laughs> But it's also one of her last uh, videos that she makes in Kuwait before her return to Canada. But yet that was, yeah, come back in five years was correct. She was going through a midlife crisis, I'd say, around this time. I literally cannot wait. I love Cheetos. I sometimes just take out on Cheetos. Let's just face it. A lot of stuff that I eat gets trapped in my bra, okay? And it gets found. So a lot of these stories are TMI. Too much information. But that's what makes them so great, I suppose. Found later when the bra comes off. But my bra and my boobs seem to particularly have a taste for Cheetos. I was eating Cheetos. It's important to know. I like to wear bras that, you know, make my boobs look like grapefruits instead of flapjacks or fried eggs. I wear them about a couple sizes too tight so it yeah, constricts everything. Doesn't matter what boyfriend I've had or partner I've had at the time. Whenever it's time to get down and it's time for this to come off because it's so tightly on there and things are so contained under pressure. When the last buckle comes off, it's like a springboard and poof, Cheetos! Pew, right in the face. Usually embarrassing when it happens at first, but then after a while, no, it never ceases to be sort of embarrassing. <laughs> so that was my first embarrassing situation that I go through in life. And this has happened a few times. I'd say it's a regular occurrence. <laughs> One time for work, I was asked to go to a conference a few hours away with my boss. I was like, sure, you know, this is a great opportunity. This one here in particular, she's telling embarrassing stories. I don't remember what it was about, but it sounded boring. <laughs> I'm not a morning person, so bad combination. Go to a boring conference and be super tired. We stayed in a hotel. The conference would start super early in the morning. The good part was that there was like good buffets. There was a lot of good food. Anyway, there was a guest speaker. We were sitting at the far back and it was like in a little corner. It was nice and air conditioned on a hot summer day. I was tired. And you know, whenever you're like in class and you just like cannot force yourself to stay awake no matter what you do, it's like... And you're like nodding off. <laughs> we used to have a math teacher that used to kick our desk really hard, scare the crap out of us when that happened. He would be talking about integers and then kick your desk and then keep talking. He was nuts. <laughs> I loved him. So anyway, this conference and I was snoring because the snoring woke me up. Nobody woke me up. They just let me do my thing. That's some very well-deserved dirty looks when I did come to, but nobody woke me up. I woke myself up by going <gasps> and started clapping. 
because I thought the guest speaker was over, I guess. I don't know why I started clapping, but it was super embarrassing. Oh, I was mortified. <laughs> the guest speaker was even like, wow, I'd like to think I'm not that boring. And then a few people chuckled. <laughs> I like she made a joke about it. All right, this is a story blast from the past. One fine afternoon, I was in the middle of Urban Garlic Instant Mashed Potatoes by Betty Crocker Binge. The guy had like two boxes. I was in the middle of stuffing those babies in when I get a call from my French lover, okay? Normally, I would be super excited to hear from him, except that I had just eaten large amounts of food and he has a very small bathroom. And to top it off, I couldn't stand hanging out with him unless I was tipsy or drunk. So I chased those taters with cheap vodka. Now, when I say small bathroom, he lived in a crappy bachelor apartment. It was like a crappy, crappy area, crappy apartment. So tiny, the sides of my butt were touching the sink and the tub. That's how small it was. The door didn't close all the way. It had like a hook, but the door stayed open a bit. It had no fan. The bathroom was here. The living room was right there and he didn't have a TV. So there's nothing to muffle the noise of bubble guts. Fix me up. That's the one thing I always hated about going to hang out in a random dude's house. The bathroom situation. What if you have to go to the bathroom? I guess this is TMI. So for those of you going, ew, you know what I'm like by now? Get over it. <laughs> so I had to go really, really bad. Like he was like making moves and I'm like, oh man, I, I can't. I'm gonna like, <laughs> like fart in your face or something. So go to the bathroom. I'm like, maybe if I just let it out a little bit at a time, then it won't be noisy. No, it was noisy. It was very noisy <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I wanted to cry. I was so embarrassed. And the fact that I was embarrassed, like he was much older than me and he thought that it was immature for me to be embarrassed about it because he was like, you far. So are you far? And he didn't say fart because he was French. I don't know. He said, you far. He said fart weird. You far. So what? You let it go. You don't talk about it. It's okay. It's your body. Okay, boomer. <laughs> you want a piece here? Yeah. Just cheese. Inside six cheese. This one. Here. This one. Just try. It's a little greasy. It's gonna be six cheese. Try the ranch. All right, last one. I was in this phase where I loved Rammstein, okay? I was like obsessed with Rammstein. And I was hanging out at this time with my biggest crush ever in school. I think it was like senior year of elementary. I don't think he liked me that way, but don't ever hang out with a guy that you like and try to be one of the boys just cause you wanna be around them because they will treat you like one of the boys. This guy would twist my arm and be rough. And I used to hang around him. He skateboarded. He was a skater boy. He said, see you later boy, like a skater boy. I wanted to be a skater skater chick. I pretended they called them posers. I was a poser. I didn't want to be a poser, but I was. I lied to him and said, I can skateboard. When are you getting your skateboard? Blah, blah, blah. I couldn't skate for the life of me. I couldn't even stand on one. I wanted to buy a skateboard just to carry it around to look cool. I bought skater shoes. I had one of those chains. I listened to Weezer. Is it called Airwalks? Those shoes. This is another embarrassing part of it. This is not the story, but one day he was just like, Chantal, I know you're a poser. It's okay. I know you can't skate. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. Being a poser. So this story definitely could have been on the uh, the other video I did with childhood stories, but since it was mixed in with the embarrassing stories, it's in with the TMI stories here. It was the worst thing. Break it till you make it. This one day I think I was getting ready for school. It was early morning. My room was in the basement at my mom's. I was in my bathroom. I was getting ready in the mirror, putting my thick black eyeliner on. I had my earphones on, blaring Rammstein, so I couldn't really hear anything. And I was singing, Du hast mich gefragt. Du hast mich gefragt. You know that song? Du. Du hast. Du hast mich. All of a sudden in the mirror in back of me, I see my friend, the guy, and he's laughing at me. I scream because he startled me and from being mortified take off the earphones he's like what are you doing dickhead <laughs> I was pretty embarrassed. I was like, nothing. <laughs> My mom let him in. Without giving me any warning. Came to pick me up. Throwing in the towel. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> Skater boy, he said see you later. <laughs> I have a fart story. <laughs> I'm really silly and I laugh at farts, especially public duck sounding fart. I could tell them becoming a YouTuber because the first thing I thought was I have to run home and tell everybody. I'm in the store. I'm standing at the deli counter. You have to take a number, wait your turn, and then the worker will call your number. There's a man wearing this Metallica t-shirt. I don't know his age, maybe middle age. I was staring at him. I really like that t-shirt and he's getting served. When all of a sudden, I thought it was a duck. It was a fart. He farted. There's a counter kind of like Subway where you pick what you want in your sandwich. I endured a huge Huge lineup. People were kind of close together and I was getting anxiety. One guy kept touching me with his rough elbow and it kept getting caught on my shirt. And we're just standing there all of a sudden. Nah, nah. I got a whiff. It was a silent fart. But when you get that whiff, immediately you just look around like, who did it? You're looking for someone to blame. It wasn't me. As it passed down the line, people were looking around and looking at me like, was it you?
Guys, it smelled, this is gonna be gross. So if you're eating, I'm sorry. I love you. It smelled like an old rancid found in your locker like a couple weeks later, bologna and cheese sandwich. I had time to analyze. <laughs> you could tell everyone was smelling it and like, oh, uh, you know. Heard other people, they just let it rip and don't say anything. My grandma says she does that because she doesn't want to acknowledge it. She finds it rude. But come on, if you're gonna let a ripper out, I mean, it's either that or people think there's a duck running loose in the store. You need to take ownership of your toots, people, okay? I'm just staring at him like, like waiting for him to say excuse me or take ownership of the fart but no he didn't so i just you know ignored him. he didn't say anything either and the other lady that was standing she had her arms crossed in front of her and she was just like looking at the counter she looked impatient her face went from grumpy to like shocked when i go grocery shopping i find everybody looks crabby a lot of people just look like i don't want to be here i just want to get my groceries get out of my way this woman looked like that it would be so funny if one day when that happens somebody just says screw social manners and was just like who farted <laughs> I think it was the guy in front of me, just by the direction of the smell. Um, babe, I'm just wondering what you would do. Like, would you have laughed inside? Like, would you find that funny or would you just be like, whatever? If he doesn't say something, people will be like, whatever. No, but just hearing the noise, would you have laughed inside? Well, it, yeah, it happened before. It happened to you? Well, I was with some workers doing a store. One of them just fell, let it go, like, laughing. <laughs> no. Oh look, we're getting a special uh, appearance from BB. Nobody say anything. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Okay, but if you burp loud and you don't say excuse me, somebody's gonna think it's rude. Anyways, I just thought that was funny. Poor guy. I mean, he must have been embarrassed, so uh, yeah. Some people do it, they don't care. No, some people don't care. It's a part of life, we all do it. It's just funny. Is that how you tell when you've matured, when you stop laughing at fart? I was watching a documentary about a girl who's a fetishist. So she does really weird fetishes, and one of them is fart porn. <laughs> to make herself fart, you know what she does? She doesn't eat Taco Bell. She doesn't get anyone to pull her. And when she's telling these stories, she's always eating too. It's it's a, it's just amazing how she can do that without gagging. <laughs> Cause it really it does make you want to lose your appetite when you're watching her eat while she's telling these stories. Her finger to make herself, you know, on command. She's lactose intolerant, so she drinks a lot of milk and then bends over, lets it rip, and then talks dirty about it. Anyway, to each his own. I'm not judging anybody. <laughs> I just didn't know that it existed. I had to share this with somebody, so. So I was thinking of something depressing on the way here about the whole situation if I'm gonna need surgery. I remember seeing a psychic a while ago, like when I was still with my ex, and she said, I don't see you with this guy forever that you're with my ex, which happened. But then she's like, I see you with someone else and you're gonna have two kids. You're gonna have a girl who's gonna be like a famous musician, right? And then you're gonna have a boy who's gonna be hyperactive and have like ADHD. And I'm thinking, what if what she was seeing was the cats? Because I have a female cat and I have a male cat who is hyperactive and has ADHD. What if that's what she was seeing? Could be. <laughs> I have to go into the store. I hate it. <laughs> I have to exchange my cat food I bought because I got like 30 cans of this cat food and I didn't pay attention to what I was buying. <laughs> I bought the cans that were the little bits of meat in a gravy. They don't like that. They like the pate. So I brought it home. I opened the can. I thought, mm, maybe they'll like it. You know? No, they don't. I don't know much about cat behavior. Maybe some of you out there know more than I do, but I'm feeling kind of bad for BB Junes because BB Junes is not taking to the idea of having another cat. But I think it only works if one of them is more dominant than the other, and that has to be Sammy. Like I noticed he comes on the bed in the morning, gets on top of me, and he's like the ruler of the bed. If BB Junes tries to get up, he'll run after her and tell her to get away. Same thing with feeding time. I'll dish them out both their food. She'll wait till he's done eating in order to start eating. And I think the fact that he's a male cat makes it worse. If I could turn back time, and not get Sammy, I would. But I can't get rid of Sammy. I love him already. I can't do that, you know? So I So in a recent video, she said, like, since moving back to Canada from Kuwait, her plan is, when she finds a place, is to um, get Sam back. Because apparently, wherever Sam went, um, there was also another cat there, and he's not getting along with that cat. So, um, yeah, I mean... Sam and BB June probably got used to each other because I think this t at this point he was so slightly still a kitten at this when she's telling this story but it's just interesting that she's deciding then to, to get um to get Sam back now at this point and that she said he wasn't really getting along with this other cat either way I hope hope she takes real good care of Sam
try to make it work. It mostly does. I've lived in some pretty shitty apartment buildings in my day. Actually, I think this one is the only one that's not bad. All right, so now we're getting into a little bit more of her living situations um, and the different neighbors that she had, which <laughs> there's always a colorful cast of characters when it comes to Chantel's life. I've had some pretty shitty neighbors, actually. The building we just came from, our neighbors were, oh my god. Okay, so the building we were at previously to this one, our neighbors were racist. A racist elderly couple. I'm glad we got away from them. I used to get random phone calls from the superintendent, who by the way was an alcoholic, and she had stuffed dead squirrels in her apartment. She was loony. She used to call me and be like, yeah, we got a complaint there that the hallway smells like weed. I'm like, so? And your proof that it's us is because our neighbor smokes weed too. But he's white, so I don't see you knocking down his door. We used to get random letters from the management, and they'd be like, We have received a complaint that you trying to look in people's mailboxes and into their cars. I was floored because I know 150% that he or I have not done that. Number one, the mailboxes are locked. They're making shit up. But it wasn't them who made us leave. It was this younger girl moved upstairs with her young daughter, and the baby daddy was a complete asshole. He left her for some crazy girl. One night, apparently, he slept over at her house with his friend okay he noticed there's water just starting to seep into my apartment and like my walls were leaking it was all over the floor so i called the emergency line right away of course it took them time to get back to me but somebody finally came we found out that the girl upstairs while she was sleeping her baby daddy's loser friend clogged her sinks purposely as a joke and let the taps run so it flooded her place and it flooded my place they had to come in and tear all of our walls off and the ceiling it was horrendous after a month of living like that i'm like we're out of here and I'm not paying the last month's rent either. Too bad. I know that legally you're not supposed to do that, but we've been bugging them for a while, like to fix things. And I think they knew they were in shit because they didn't say anything. <laughs> and I feel bad for the kid. Nightmare. This other neighbor I had at this building I used to live in in my hometown, one of my first apartments, I lived with my ex, James. Hi. We moved in as roommates originally. We weren't dating. I was dating this other guy named Chris, my French lover. And one night I was out front of the building breaking up with him. <laughs> and in the midst of breaking up with him, this woman, probably in her 50s, came out on her balcony in like a lacy robe wearing hardly anything. I'll never forget this woman. She's like, hey. Okay, so I think when she, yeah, she's referred to Chris only like once, I think. And that's kind of like where she let it slip, I guess. But her French lover, I think his name's Christian. Or Christian, like, I don't know how you, you want to pronounce it in French, but I'm pretty sure this is who she's talking about. The guy who was like, you know, almost 40 when she was still in her teens. Yeah, that creepy guy. Hey, you guys, come have a drink with us. This was probably in 2005, and I was like, okay. He and I went to her apartment. She had a setup, man. She had like a full bar, and she's like, hey, come do tequila shots with me. And she was like complimenting me and calling me pretty and stuff. So I kind of got like a, she was hitting on me kind of vibe, but she was very intoxicated. So I was like, okay, cool. I like tequila. So we did like, oh my God, I did so many shots, like just one, one, one. She's like, keep going. Then she went in her room and brought out... <laughs> these handcuffs and handcuffed me to her I and mean, her boyfriend was there he was missing legs above the knee he would get around by his arms i was really tipsy so i just found it dizzying he would go back and forth like between the living room and the bathroom and he was like really fast on his arms and i was like whoa you know and i remember like i kind of like zonked out i don't know i was so hammered when i kind of came to like regain consciousness a bit chris if you're watching this you'll remember this <laughs> he was kind of like trying to wake me up to go you know but i was still handcuffed to her i think and i saw her like really close to my face and I think she was like trying to get in my shirt and stuff. I was like, no thanks. <laughs> All I remember is him like carrying me. Yeah, carrying. I wasn't that heavy back then. I mean, I was always chunky, but into my apartment. Like I lived downstairs from her and I was sick all night. Oh my God. So the next day, James, my roommate at the time. That's it, I'm out of here. <laughs> He hated her because she kept coming to the door, you know, with ridiculous things. One day he opens the door, she shoves a kitten through the door. Can you take this? No, we have two cats. Get out of here. The next day she knocked at the door in her lacy nightgown and she's like, do you want this dildo? <laughs> it was like totally a used freaking sex toy. I was like, oh, thanks. And then I, I shot it in the garbage. I didn't want to be rude, but I totally could tell it was used. I won't go into detail about that, but thanks for the housewarming gift. <laughs> Big purple dong. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ew, I'm so inappropriate. It's true, it happened. She was so classless. She's like, she said this to me. She's like, you wanna hear something funny? I was in the backyard and I really had to throw up. So I was bending over to throw up and I looked over. She was squatting right in front of a window of like a family of five that were from Pakistan. And they were all looking at her horrified in her friggin' night, little lacy nightgown hovering over, bare ass trying to vomit. <laughs> Ew! No, bad lady. I would have gone out and rubbed her nose in it. And when we moved out of that place, the movers, oh my god, hired these movers we saw in the paper. It was like a bunch of hooligans, young teenage dudes with a moving truck. Zero respect for anybody. They called my mother-in-law a bitch. I was so mad. They stole $40 from my purse. I left my purse in the bathroom. The guy went to use the bathroom. Five minutes later, 40 bucks is missing. He made fun of my stuff. He's like, nice couch. I'm like, do you have a supervisor? He's like, I am the supervisor. Yeah, right. I was mad. And they overcharged us. The things I used to put up with back then, never, would never do it now. Oh man, oh man. Mm -mm. Sometimes you just gotta let things go, huh? <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, identify yourself as. I thank you for listening to my crazy stories because I go off on tangents. I've met some crazy people in my day <laughs> so thanks for watching guys love you guys as i was going to my car in the garage i saw patat looking through the dumpsters he wasn't in the dumpster and i felt bad that he's digging in the dumpster for food when i'm going to binge eat so i gave him 10 bucks right now i'm looking at a colony of spiders like a family of spiders living in behind this one picture in front of me should get some footage one of these days now yes i'm scared of spiders and i know what you're thinking why don't you kill them if the spider they don't pay taxes. And rent. I wish they paid rent. <laughs> they made a big web, see all that? There's a little guy there learning how to make a web or something. So I don't want to kill spiders because I just don't feel right about it. I feel bad. A spider. What should we name that spider? Ignatius? How about Fern? Can we name him Fern? The spider. Oh. No, he's a family member. They're not bothering us, honestly. They probably eat bugs. They just stay behind the curtain. I'm just gonna leave them there. I have a home invasion story to tell you. I need to move, okay, because you'll never believe this. Today, I'm sleeping in bed with BB. We're snoring away. All of a sudden, I hear the door. Knock, 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 and I'm half asleep. I'm the type of person that if you don't tell me you're coming over beforehand and give me a warning, I'm not answering my door. <laughs> All right, so this story is like... It could happen to anybody. It's it's just so scary to think about when you're living in an apartment building and that other people have keys to your apartment. So you want to make sure that anytime you're like sleeping, put that lock the lock across if you have it. Hopefully it's not just the key. Cause this is just this is weird. This is a weird story that I'm one of the lowest people. So I fall back asleep and I'm dreaming, but there's people walking around my house talking and the voices are loud. So they're slowly waking me up. And as I'm coming to, the voices should be dissipating and they weren't, they were still there. So I started panicking before I opened my eyes. I'm like, is there people in my house? Open my eyes. Next thing I know, freaking Brady Bunch is in the doorway of my bedroom. And this woman with a clipboard is like, oh, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. Good thing I wasn't naked. Sometimes I like butt naked with my freaking ass in the air. There was like a family of five viewing an apartment. Turns out she had the wrong apartment i was like excuse me <laughs> i was bitchy i was still bloody half asleep <laughs> and bb wasn't too happy he kind of bolted awake so they left get it right sometimes we sleep in the nude you know with a cover but still sometimes the cheeks protrude <laughs> we have these neighbors from hell so i was living with pete in our apartment we have a nickname for him well i did mr pink dink <laughs> okay so this story this story is pretty weird but it's also one of those things where Chantal enjoys attention from anyone by the end of it. I guess she wasn't really enjoying the attention this guy was giving her, but once she realized that she could get that kind of attention from him, she was like, she'd look for it. I don't know, it's weird. It's weird, but this, <laughs> this guy could have been on the run for something. He was a redhead, red eyebrows, eyelashes, freckles everywhere. He had a girlfriend. He was unemployed and stayed home all day while she went to work. I think she worked at Sears because I talked to her briefly. Very meek, very shy, but very nice lady, okay? There was something sketchy throughout the day. It sounded like he was making orgasm noises. I would hear him through the wall. Those were thick walls. Anyway, all you hear was, oh, oh. I swear that's what it sounded like. Pete wouldn't pay any attention to it. Hello? Someone's having an orgasm next door. We either laugh or have some kind of reaction to it. I usually laughed by myself. 
himself. He just creeped me out. Every time we would see them in the hall going into their apartment at the same time as us, they always look at me like, he had a serial killer look. You know what I mean? Like predator look. She wouldn't be looking. She's just like, hi, you know, but he would like look extra long and like, like, buddy, you can tell when a guy wants you. You can tell when a guy is effing you with his eye. You know what I'm saying? Like you could tell. And yes, dudes wanted me. Get over it. <laughs> Not that that was flattering, but <laughs> we lived there for a few years and that was the gist of it until a couple of encounters here. One day, it was nighttime, pulling into the parking lot and my parking space was right in front of their balcony window and they were on the top floor with us. We lived on the third floor. So I'm pulling in and I just happened to look up. His curtains are like wide open and I could see him like sitting on the couch looking at the TV, but he looks over, sees that I'm pulling in. He got up and he moved towards the window. I don't know if he saw it was me or what, like I don't know, but I'm looking. I didn't have my glasses on, so I had to like squint real hard. The more I squinted, the more it came clear to me. A pale, fleshy mess of a body. A little limp wiener, a little nut sack, and just pink everywhere. Like, just pink. In the dark, I could see the pink. <laughs> well, he had his lights in his living room. I looked, when I realized what it was, I felt like my fight or flight kicked in, actually. He was standing at the window by then, and it was like, I ran into the apartment. I had this knot in my stomach like I was gonna puke. You know when you're going down a steep roller coaster? I get in, lock the door, and I wasn't very hush-hush about it. I was loud. I was like, oh my god, Pete! Oh my god, oh my god, and I told him what happened, and I'm still at the door. All of a sudden I hear, I'm really sorry. I thought you were my girlfriend. I'm so sorry. It won't happen again. And I was Ew, this creep got the, like, the wrong reaction that he was expecting from Chantel, and then had to go apologize. Like, this guy's just this is a horrible story. I feel so bad for her as if this happened. I was like, what do I say? And Pete's just looking at me. I think I just said, okay, fine, good night. I don't really remember. I think I said something like that. My question is, did he know it was me or did he just stand up randomly? Even if he thought it was your girlfriend. Who does that? That was uh, uncomfortable to say the least. Then, about a week later or so, I get a knock at my door and I hate when people come to my door unannounced, unexpected. Like, I just won't answer. No, I watch too much investigation discovery. I look in the people. It's a lady. Nothing too alarming. I answer. It's like, I'm sorry to bother you. Have you seen this man? Has like, a picture. It's him. And she said like a name but it wasn't his name that he told us it wasn't the name that you see on the buzzer code downstairs i was like oh my god this guy he's probably a felon or something or maybe he was hiding from her crazy ass <laughs> so i was like do i tell her where he lives do i give it away it didn't take me long to decide that yes i am gonna so like he's my neighbor he lives next door could be home now so she's like thank you i don't know what became of that incident i saw him again i was outside i was crying i was really drunk one of those annoying drunk criers so he so the reason why she was sitting outside, <clears throat> she tells us this in another story time, but the reason why she was sitting outside was because she, she had invited some guy over and it was right at the end of her relationship with Pete's and she was expecting that this guy was coming over to see her but then turned out that he was more interested in her friend. So this guy and her friend were in her apartment hooking up and she got upset and went outside and because they were all drinking she went outside and was sitting outside and then this creepy guy who did all this after doing all that creepy stuff knowing that somebody's looking for him and he's using an alias like then this happens where she uh she then um welcomes the attention had come outside and he sat down beside me on the stoop and he looked like a nervous shaky dog and i remember looking at him all drunk and i was like you like me right <laughs> and he was like oh yes very much i like you i think you're beautiful and i was like you'd sleep with me right i'm totally trying to get self-validation because i felt like shit about myself because the guy was doing my friend in the apartment i don't know what happened after i don't remember that was that for him oh i think you're beautiful oh <laughs> I'm so annoyed. I went to bed late last night, like four in the morning, and all I hear is bang, bang, bang. Baby was on nights, right? So he was up, but he was getting ready to go to bed. And I was sleeping. Bang, bang, bang. I ignore it. He was like, who is it? Did you pay the rent? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Then maybe 15 minutes later again, bang, bang, bang. So I go to the door, my hair all messy and my PJs. It's a fucking maintenance guy. He's staring at me. I'm like, yes? And he's like, yeah, your neighbor's bathtub is not working. So I'm like, Okay, I said, so what do you need from me? You know, and he's like, well, I guess just for you to open the door. But the thing is, he didn't even need that because actually the second time I heard the bang, I wasn't going to open the door again, but I heard him starting to get the key to go into my fucking apartment. And yeah, that's another incident there where like pe random people that you don't even know have keys to your house. Like it's, it's creepy.
Number one, I thought they had to give you 24 hours notice before they do that. I hate apartment living. I don't feel like there's any fucking control over shit like that. I hate that. People can just come in your apartment whenever they fucking want to. I'm sorry. I like, I'm swearing because I'm pissed off when I think about it. Ugh. Anyway, so I'm like, okay, so you have to come in my bathroom or what do you have to do? Like he wasn't explaining what the hell he had to do to my apartment. So he comes in. My bathroom was kind of dirty. I had clothes on the floor. <laughs> I was probably thinking what a slob. But the tub and everything was clean. He makes three trips in and out bringing tools, power drills, sand or like all this other big drills and shit. I'm like, oh great. The baby's not going to be able to sleep. It's going to be loud. My bathroom's going to be a disaster area. And sure enough, there's like soot and dirt all over the floor. He cleaned up the tub part because I was like, who's going to clean that mess? I just cleaned my bathroom. They had to take off piece of the ceiling, take out some of the pipe. I don't know. There's The way that they do things in my town, the piping messed up. I don't know. I don't know the explanation. Anyway, put the ceiling back on. It took him like an hour and a half. And I was like, I want to shower and go out. It's moments like that that really try my patience. I have to really remember to be calm happens hey guys it is dark in this parking garage i all right so we're almost done we're ending here on her creepy parking garage that she has while living with bb do not like parking garages. I have a fear of them. The reason I really don't like my garage is because they don't take good care of it. There's like this random sofa. I'll try to show you guys it. It's really disgusting and it's been there since last year. Get rid of it already, you know? Whenever rent is cheap, it's usually too good to be true. You know, like when you buy a house that's really cheap, probably because like a whole family was murdered in there. It's and haunted. Well, that's like my building. There's this big truck that has been stationed in the corner of this garage forever and a day. Every time I walk out, I'm like always alone in the garage too. I don't know why nobody else in the whole friggin' building is going in the garage, but it would be comforting <laughs> unless it's like a creepy looking guy <laughs> or girl. I don't know. There's this noise. There's some kind of animal living behind that truck and it doesn't sound like a cat. I have seen cats in here, but this does not sound like a cat. This sounds like if a raccoon had sex with a gremlin. Yeah, I don't know what it is. So anyway, that's the disgusting couch. It's just a mini vlog. I'm still getting used to like going in public places and vlogging. People look at you <laughs> funnily. <laughs> Moment of truth. Yeah. Hey guys, so as you saw, the couch is gone. Gone, gone, gone. Good. Bye. Been there long enough. The saga of the couch is over. All right, so that's the end. We made it through <laughs> all of her lover stories, the TMIs, the embarrassing moments. Definitely like extra too much information there on some of them. But it's a... <laughs> It's a funny walk down memory lane. She used to tell these stories all uh, during the 2019, 18, 19. Anyway, it was it was interesting to see all of them all together. So if you're if you're uh, liked this one, there's more of them. We did her childhood stories and her teen stories, um, which included like going out to the bar stories as well. So, yeah, I guess that's it for today. I released a video earlier, and it's um, a compilation I did of, of uh, Jerry Springer episodes of, like, the funniest moments that I've watched, because it's something I do. I watch a lot of Jerry Springer. I think it's hilarious. But I wanted to find the really funny parts, so I put a video together, and it's on this channel. If you want to go check it out. It's only like 15 minutes long. It's not as long as this was. Two hours. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate you being here. And if you're not subbed up to my other channel too, Positive PR, you go check that out. I go live on there all the time too. And I also have um, daily motion pages that I have been posting on. Eventually, eventually I'm going to put all the stuff that's on my regular Positive PR channel on daily motion over to the positive PR goes live so make sure you sub up because um, that has all of my old content that used to be on YouTube 
I moved it all over to there and it's like stuff that has no commentary on it it's just compilation videos and then I'm gonna so I'm gonna be slowly moving that over to my goes live so there's two daily motion pages that you could follow for more content and um, the next one we have with foodie is gonna be Pete's I believe we have lots of stories of her like living with Pete's and then I'm going to definitely have a long one of uh, one with her and BB. Because there was a time where I was going through all of her old videos and getting just clips of uh, when BB's in the room talking and their conversations. And so I have a lot of footage of just her and BB that I think would be interesting to look through. It's been a while since they've been together, so, and she's changed so much. Yet some is still the same. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to shut this one down, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for being here throughout the whole thing. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.